This is State of Decay 2, The Rise of the Red Talon Trader. Can one overly powered man conquer the Blood Plague, defeat evil and rise the ranks of the Lizard Gang cult? This is the story of Terence. So we spawn into Trumbull Valley, and I've already got Nobeds bickering on the radio. Oh, Sheriff, please come help me, someone murdered my friend. It's the bloody apocalypse, sort it out yourself, you bellends. For the first time ever, I was given an option of where I want to set up my base, so I went with the Tranquility Factory. Now, obviously, when you set up any base for the first time, there's a fair bit of admin. I rip shit down, repair what's useful, and build entirely new facilities. Some would call this riskier than a handjob from Edward Scissorhands, but this strategy is never Ever done me wrong in the past, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Says they're heading for base. Get everybody ready. Oh well, that was bloody predictable, wasn't it? I load up my shotgun, ready for the onslaught of zombies. But my mates are already complaining. You know what we could really use around here? Electricity. Yeah, that would be great, mate. But do you know what you need to worry about first? The zombies, which are about to eat our brains. But with this being the first zombie siege of this map, the undead are no real threat to my community. Either that, or I'm just becoming competent at this game. But I'll let you decide that in the comment section. Boom. So I leave the community to deal with the threat while I go and check out our new home. Oh, what a lovely little garden this is. Oh, man, this is very tranquil. Okay, there's a lot of zombies going on. But before I can get back to the action... Oh, we did it. Not a single thing to worry about. <laughs> with the threat dead with, I decide to sort out that bickering bitch on the radio. But every good leader knows you need the support of the troops. Bringing back a dangerous fugitive for people we barely know? This can't be worth the risk. We need allies against the blood plague and this person needs to face justice. I don't care what Bone says. We're off to help people because we're good guys now for some unknown reason which I haven't really explained. As a good guy I decide to save petrol and take a shortcut. But this has me send it off the edge of a cliff and into a very shallow stream below. Okay so this might have been an issue. But a concussion and shallow water isn't my greatest threat right now. Wait, oh great. No, 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 no! Oh my god, get out! I managed to claw myself away from the cloud, but I'm not without injury. Uh, yeah, so the, the issues have been had. I'm so panicked I can't even step over this small stick. Thankfully the juggernaut is very stupid. Says the bloke that tried to take a shortcut and ended up spiralling out of control 20 metres down a ravine. Pop some painkillers, why not? The sensible play right now is to turn around and go home. But seeing as there's a massive pain in the arse between here and my bed, I decide my best bet would be to find a car to drive me to safety. Yep, we are almost out. So I climb a tall tower and start scouting the local area. God, there's so many sites to survey. I find a passenger van but it's deep inside plague territory and there's fuck all fuel in it which is fine as long as i remember to loot some on the way well, at least i found the car do you reckon there'll be any fuel in the back there is look 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 my luck is going up. while i'm pure mobile i decide to go chat to the enclave about the fugitive issue making sure to avoid that nasty pack of blood plague bloaters this van handles absolutely abysmally. I really should be focusing on taking out player hearts, let's be honest. I arrive at the Stray Cats, but it's become apparent I didn't read the mission description. They've got a fugitive. Wait, have I got to take in a fugitive? Oh, can't I just shoot them? Leko disappeared right after the killing. If you bring him back for trial, we can offer supplies to help you destroy the player cards. Yeah, sounds like a deal. I'm on the case. However, the game seems bugged because no matter how many times I accept the mission, the story doesn't progress. That is until I cancelled it. Do you agree? Apparently, by cancelling the mission it allowed me to start it wait is the mission just cancelled okay well thanks game you've really ruined my relationship with these dudes so there's really only one thing i can do with them there's only two of them i can take it the countdown hit zero and i shove a thermite grenade so far up their asses they'll be farting smoke rings until christmas the shotgun is also a big help stay down bitch it turns out i may have underestimated these lads oh my god these guys just tank shots to the face what the hell is going on but loud guns tend to lead to visitors okay great i'm on the on the radar i do what i do best but things seem to escalate. Okay, yep, this is an issue. Oh, I haven't got any stims. Gotta kill that screamer. Oh, yeah, the screamer. Yeah, let's take on the screamer, is it, love? That's what we really need to do right now. I don't know what I'm doing. I can't leave you with them. They're still alive. It shows weakness. So I camp in the bathroom and spray them with my shotgun. Line them up, bitches. In the hope that this would thin the horde and allow me to finish off the final Enclave member. However, this leads to more trouble. Oh, great. That's not good. That's not good. Oh, shit. Um, well, I never wanted to miss an opportunity. Come on. That's what I like. I don't even know where they've gone. I've checked all the rooms. They must have run away. Thinking the final hostile has abandoned his home, I jump in the van and skedaddle. But as I'm leaving, I hear the cries of a feral, and I'm not sure if Nightmare Zone has plague ferals or not. Oh, no, it's, it's just a regular feral. Oh, Nightmare Zone, oh, it's going to be easy. Oh, God. So I slam it into a tree. Get off your prick. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. Oh, and I nearly died like four times already. 
Oh my god, this thing just does not want to turn on corners. Given my current situation, it's definitely a good idea to head back to base. But for some reason, I decided it would be a fantastic idea to head back the same way we came. Oh great. The jug smacks me in the side. Yep, we're going to avoid him. I wondered where he was. However, I overestimated my reversing skills. No, 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 no. Don't want to do this. Oh great. With me trapped on my back, the juggernaut can easily assault me. Can you give us another hit, juggy boy? The jug smashes away, but at least I'm not taking any direct damage. I manage to escape and pop a warning shot into his gut. Oh, for Christ's sake. This obviously just angered the big bastard. Well, uh, that's a good thing I'm one speedy boy. That's when disaster strikes. Again? Seriously? How can I be that unlucky? But right now, things are looking more desperate than ever. And oh god, I just realised how close I am to death. Oh, look at this. Fantastic. I'm fairly close to base, but there's a massive assortment of blood plague between me and safety. But I'm an absolute beast. Yep, time to reload. Get those bullets in, love. The shock on my face says it all. Another leader dies in episode one of a new difficulty. I'm as predictable as a pedo in a park. Laurel has succumbed to blood plague. Can I get an R.I.P. Laurel in the comment section? Although, now I think about it, that death is utter bullshit. The plague meter was miles off. There is absolutely no way she should have died from blood plague. They need to change that to died from blunt force trauma. Well, at least we don't have to worry about the bed situation. That's a cracking piece of advice for you. If you're ever short on bed, just bump off your leader. It's great to see I maintain my position as the number one tips and tricks channel on YouTube. So I think it's time we start taking this difficulty seriously. So I swapped to Terrence, who's our kick-ass red talon guy. That was a sick roll. Let's be honest with you. I also call in the Impaler. It seems Big Norma got lost during the move. Oh, no. No, 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 not Terry. Ah, screw the melee fight, man. Don't worry about being silent. Just whip out the machine gun and go to town on the bastards. I catch this plague, I'm a dead man. Yes, you probably will be. So my plan from here is to take out the two hearts plague in this corner of the map. Then once the area is free of blood plague, I can start claiming outposts to improve our daily resources. That also includes a water facility that will improve morale and make it easier to grow food. The first heart I come across also has a stranger in need of my help. We'll help this woman. Possibly. Although I might live to regret that. I charge in and save her life with my assault rifle, but I get bit from behind. Ah, shit, I got the clap. Well, that's not good, is it? I desperately need to get out of here so I can pop a cure. As the heart is right there, I drop a pipe bomb on my way past. Oh, great. Oh, for Christ's sake. Nope, 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 nope. Don't think so. Battered, bruised, and infected, I limp to the safety of the roof of my car. Oh, God, right. Well, I didn't think I'd have to use it so soon, but let's sort out the plague cure. I'm able to get shots off on the roof of the car. This is cheating. But decide an all-out assault is definitely more entertaining. Yeah, that definitely hurt it. A horde of zombies are up my arse, but I'm packing mollies like I'm a city dealer. Let's burn those zombies alive. I don't know if it's glitched, but I've got unlimited sprint right now. I do the old hand-to-hand -hand combat, then retreat through the horde, stunning them. This is a little trick I picked up from other creators who are much better at the game than me. But I think it's fair to say I still need some practice. Oh, great. That's not what I wanted. No, no. No, 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 no. I managed to beat them away, then drop another pipe bomb. Okay, well, looks like we're gonna cheat this one for the last bit. I'm just grateful the hordes go down after the heart is destroyed. Thank Christ for that. Do you mind coming over here? Yeah, sure. She's like, cheers, but that was a close one, wasn't it? LOL. I'm a bit of a klutz, but I'm glad you were in the area to save my ass. Whereas I just straight up insulted. I didn't expect that. That's what I'm here for. She was kind enough to drop me a big old rucksack of food, and after doing a bit of looting and healing, it's time to take on another heart. The way to the heart, I drive past one left to the hostiles from earlier. I climb to the safety of the roof of my car. And like you mate, just sitting here watching my enemies die. It's kind of uh kind of fun actually. Well I'm just hoping that he'll take out all the zombies and then I won't have to. But let's be honest at this point you all know my attention span isn't the best. I'm helping. It was a mercy kill. Come on, lads. Now I am in a bit of an issue, though. But my intelligence knows no bounds. As I lead them away, which opens up a gap, allowing me to get into the driver's seat of the car. I don't need the door. I mean, I definitely needed the door, let's be honest. Lucky for me, the player cart's in a half-finished house, which will make it so much easier to shoot it while standing on the roof of my car. So I drive around it, trying to find a good angle on the big girl. Here she be. And I'm sorry, but I can't help but flex my skills on you all. Oh my god! Well, that was cool. I just did a kickflip. I just did a freaking kickflip. I just I do would be best to get the first phase out of the way with Melly. After that, I can either burn it or shoot it from the safety of my car. But every great strategist needs to be flexible and able to change the plan at a 
moment, no this. And there's a bloater there. In fact, actually, that could work out quite well for me. I pop the bloater right next to the heart, then follow it up with a molly that ignites the cloud, delivering an insane amount of damage. They are beasts. All I have to do then is take out a feral and I'm golden. That, that worked out really well. Now, with a large chunk of the map safe for exploration, it's time to claim some outposts to make living in the apocalypse more bearable. I start with a utility shed on the edge of town. That will supply my base with fresh water and allow me to fully upgrade my farm. I take this as an opportunity to give Terence a rest, seeing as he's slightly infected. So I swap characters to Laura and swap the Impaler for the repair van. Seeing as this could be an excellent opportunity to do a shitload of looting. The first outpost I want is medical. It's a pet store? And we get med collection from it? Sounds good to me. Surely a pet shop would be better off as a food resource. Deep fried hamster sounds like a lovely delicacy. I want my third outpost to give me a daily food resource and I've always wanted to own a bar. But surely a pub would make a better medical outpost, especially as alcohol fixes all of life's worries. I then make my way to what will be the final outpost of the video. An outpost that'll give me a daily ammo resource. And seeing how the previous two went, I wouldn't be surprised to see this being a high school. Lucky for me it's not, it's actually just a gun shop. A gun shop that happens to be full of zombies. She's not a gunslinger. Oh, what am I even doing risking her then? Oh my god, this is foolish manoeuvre. But luckily I'm a pro and won't let that stop me. I then upgrade the tavern to level 3 and the pet shop and the gun store to level 2. This is where I was going to leave it, but a lonely stranger needs my help. And I'm pretty sure I've already made it apparent that I'm the good guy. Need some help! Now! You're pinned down, that's okay, I'm coming. I mean, I don't know what she is pinned down by. But my presence tends to attract large hordes. And my new nickname is the American government. I got this. Oh yeah, that's good. As I throw an insane amount of explosives just to flex on my enemies. Oh shit! That bloater came out of that shed! Was she just chilling out with it? I was hoping to clear out nearby infestation. Can you help me? Yeah, sure, why not? You've probably figured out what that means by now. I kick in a door and burn everything with fuel bombs. And it turns out my new mate isn't as much of a badass as I thought. Oh god damn, she's getting munched on. Okay, I'm ready to get out of here. I'm a gentleman, so give the lady a lift back to her home. And it turns out she's actually former military. And it's always a good idea to keep the people carrying large caliper weaponry on your side. We then head back to base and take over as Bones, whose mission is simple. Travel to the opposite side of the map for a bloody comic book. This might be a big old waste of time. Oh, what was that? Was that a feral? But I know a feral's greatest weakness. That's what I think of you, son. Wait, what? A mission? I did a commission! Oh, look at that! I'm just very influential, what can I say? I take down one feral, you like and subscribe. Wow, <laughs> what a legend. And then I immediately crash into a parked car. Jesus Christ, I might as well have my missus drive it. And no, before I get those comments, that's not a sexist thing. She's actually just a terrible driver. In fact, I would say that you're sexist for thinking I'm sexist for saying that she's a terrible driver. After literally driving to the other side of the map, I arrive at the place that's not exactly a comic book store. Oi, oi, what's going on, boys? Oh my god. You seriously just blew up that like that? But as we all know, the guts of a bloat are highly flammable. Even though I'm pretty sure that doesn't make scientific sense. Well, it'd be rude not to. I shoot out the window and lob a molly through it. However, the neighbours aren't exactly pleased about that. And they've decided my punishment should be being eaten to death. Which I'm sure you'll agree is a perfectly reasonable punishment. Oh shit. And unfortunately, that's not the end of the bad news. Wait, has this guy not got gunslinger? Am I coming out with him? So it was a good thing I'm fast as fuck and agile as a cat. What an absolute fool. No, he's got assault. Oh my god, that doesn't even get you. Ah, wing. Look at that, you thought I was gonna get bitten. I didn't. Right, I swear to god, this comic better be bloody worth it. And why the hell would I be looking for a comic book in a pub? Personally, I couldn't think of a worse place to look for a comic book. What I do expect to find is a sack of grub. And while I don't find the comic itself, I do find a torn cover with a note scribbled on the inside. And it's basically saying, come to this address, you better have something good to trade though. Then while leaving through the back door, we get a serious amount of company. Is that a fucking juggernaut? I decide it would be a good idea to get out of your pretty sharpish. Let's get out of your pretty sharpish, I think. I'm just gonna chuck that in the back. Though, you know what I mean? Why not take your time when you've got a juggernaut and a massive ass horde chasing you down? I drive to the given address, and luckily it's only a few streets away from that abandoned pub. What's the point in finding some comic book nerd during the apocalypse, man? If he doesn't give me this comic, he's gonna greatly regret it. Although, to be honest, he's probably gonna regret it whether he gives it to me or not. As my muscle-engined car is quite loud and has drawn quite literally a couple of hordes. Although, she does have her base set up right next to a play cart, so you can't blame me for everything. Please save me, lady. I don't wanna waste my ammo. Although, my faith I put in this stranger might have been misguided. How are you missing point blank to the face? Oh my god, this woman's terrible. To be honest, if I just give it another, like, two minutes, I might be able to take the comic i off her for free. I follow her into her house like I'm a creepo. I then tell her I want that copy of the bloody comic book. I think I'll hold on to this for now. 
until I really need something from you. Uh, my mission is to leave empty-handed. Are you freaking serious? So I do what I'm told and smack a zombie with my shovel. Mission complete. I got nothing for it. I can't believe I've just wasted everybody's time. Seeing as this was a massive waste of everybody's time, I decide to check out if she's got anything worth trading. Oh my god, she just got recycling guide. She just got books. She's a freaking nerd. Seeing as she's not useful to me, I leave. Hey, zombies. Over here. After that, I get word on the radio that there's a survivor nearby in need of my help. And I think I've already proved as the good guy it's my destiny to pull this guy to safety. It turns out the guy's just chilling at a petrol station. You, you, what, the smart thing to do would be just to jump in my car, mate. You know, I'm kind of offering it to you. I use my amazing reversing skills to thin the hole, but it seems my new mate is surrounded. Oh, look, he seems to really be struggling. I can help him out with that. And help him out, I do. Boom. But that's when the penny drops, and I realise the real reason why I'm here. Is this play card I gotta destroy? Oh, fucking hell, that's what you get for all reading the fucking titles, isn't it? I decide I wanna do this old school. And go hand to hand with the big old girl. Take the old stim, smack it in the... Face. Then dodge because as I've already said, I'm quick as fuck. But the thing about zombies is they don't give up and they just keep on coming. Get off! Try to phase it! Come on! You can do it! I get it to phase, then lob a molly at it. But during my tactical retreat, more bad news catches up to me. Oh god! Dude! Save my ass! He's a fucking fellow on me! He's too quick! But there's one thing in this world that you definitely can't outrun. That'll have him. That'll have him. That'll have him. Fire and a spray and pay tactic. Boom! Look at that. I'm a beast. A myth amongst men. Okay, actually, it turns out I'm not, and I just knocked him down. Oh god, no! There's a feral! Yes, of course there's a feral, you fucking moron. It's the same feral from earlier. You haven't dealt with it yet. Right, we need a new new strategy for this. Talk about an over-exaggeration. Could someone save my ass, please? But I'll always eventually get that win. Oh, that was a beast of a shot, though. And with that feral down, I'm able to empty my lord and take out the player. Got it. Yeah, sit down, son. That's what I fucking think. All right? Although after all this chaos, my new BFF, Mads, isn't in great condition. My head is splitting and my skin feels like it's on fire. This is bad, right? I don't have any cure on me, but the open road can be a lonely place. And it's always great to make new friends. But just because he's on a timer doesn't mean I'm just gonna go rush about. That's how accidents happen. And the one thing we don't want in the apocalypse is more accidents. So after I thoroughly searched the surrounding area and my boot packed tighter than a nun's continued love for her god. I head north in my search for a power station. You might think that's cynical of me, but that's not true. I'm a changed man. I have plague cures in my storage locker. All I gotta do is create an outpost and I can cure our new BFF. Although as I'm heading north, I get a message on the radio and he doesn't seem particularly friendly. Hey Doc, we got some unwelcome visitors. But at that point I get distracted when a power station pops up on my minimap. Oh, there's a bloater! Oh man, I managed to avoid him. But I'm gonna have to take out the play cart in order to claim it. So I make sure to park up with my car in a safe position. But I need to scout out the area to make sure it's safe. So leave Mads to deal with the horde below. Yeah, sound. Complete. Oh, wow. I did it. Sweet, man. I search the surrounding area and it's fair to say there's an assortment of nasty shit about. So I slide down so me and my mate Mads can clean out the area a smidge. Mads, where you at, man? But it might be bad news for Mads. Did you see Mads? Mads! Is that him? Where's his rucksack gone? Unfortunately, the fire from the molly causes his head to explode. So it's gonna mean identifying his corpse for his loved one's incredibly difficult. What an accuracy. What a man. So I take down the local play cart in Mads' honour, then claim the Mount Tanner power station as my outpost. Fantastic. But while looting the local area, I come across an issue. What the fuck? Time to take my revenge. It might not have been a jug that killed Laurel in the previous episode, but that juggernaut definitely had a massive part to play in his demise. Let's go maximum effort. Maximum speed. So I use the back of my spiky car to repeatedly ram the big bastard. But my lack of planning once again bites me in the arse. Oh, that's not a good thing. That is not a good thing. And also, I'm rather heavy. So while he charges, I unload a clip into it. But unfortunately, 9mm rounds just bounce off his fat head. Shit. So I stick to the same spray and pay tactic and dodge under his arm. That is until we get more bad news. This fucking plague ferals. What? Not plague ferals. There's a pack of the fuckers. A pack of ferals come charging out of the bushes. And there's only one thing I can do. I climb to the safety of my car to escape the onslaught below. Oh my god, this is not, this is not good. I think the plague fells were murdered by the juggernaut. Then from the safety of my vehicle, I repeatedly headshot the juggernaut. Jumped, yes, got him. That definitely could have gone so much worse. <laughs> Let's be honest, it definitely could have gone better. We took out 
a jug on dre on nightmare. So after a quick refuel and repair, get your screwdriver out, and son. There you go. That's the way. I continue my journey north, but this time it's to chat to those strangers on the radio from earlier. As we get closer to their base, it seems one of them are having second doubts about whether or not to trust me. I mean, you should definitely be worried about my cult. I mean, team. And let's be honest, they probably got a right to be. I did just let my mates succumb to blood plague because I really wanted the power station as an outpost. Get off my car door, you prick. <laughs> Can't believe you broke my door. I've only just repaired that. Honest to God. I make my way inside of the ranger station. Oh, we're on day 20. They're doing some sciencey shit where they need the hand of an alpha male. I need a little more context. I'm a details kind of guy. They're a bit vague and I'm not really a fan of that usually. But basically they're building some sort of really important tech thing. And they'll likely need me to travel to the other side of the map in order to collect an inanimate object. And did you see that then? That description was Dr. Hoffman, mad scientist. Oh yes, the mad scientist. I've just noticed that this is the name of the enclave. And not wanting to piss off some mad scientists, me and their mate Mickey head off on the open road. On my way south, I hit an epic jump and get rewarded for it. We got 25 influence for that. Was that for the jump? I have no idea. <laughs> and seeing as we got, like, a really long way to drive, Mickey starts giving me all of their backstory. But I hate chatting to strangers unless I got a pint in my hand. And seeing as it would be classed as irresponsible to drink and drive, I sit there in silence. Well, that is until I drive past a hostile enclave. Who the hell are these guys? But it turns out they're not exactly neighbourly. Why are they just shooting at me? Are they heard about me? So I decide to introduce Mickey to the J Talbot School of Dealing with Hostile Enclaves. You know what we're doing? The first thing I do is lob a Molotov for passive damage. But forgetting I haven't got Gunslinger, I just kick the air. But they've definitely got Aimbot installed and snipe me down with a single shot. Oh shit! The motherfucker! Seeing as they're dirty, cheating hackers, I decide it would be best to leave. You're not welcome. Yep, that's fine. That's fine, love. That's... No! Mickey, help me! Hostiles on Nightmare are not to be dealt with! But when Mickey distracted them, I managed to sort myself out and take cover behind my car. You might be alright, mate. They got two juggernauts for there. So I sit in my car on my horn, not just attracting that horde with two juggernauts, but every zombie in that neighbourhood. See you later, lads. Uh, you can deal with that juggernaut, the two of them, on your own. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll be sure to check in with their progress later in the video. Moving on, we get to the factory, which has supposedly got the expensive computer thingy. Oh, it's an infestation. Which is mental, because it's right next to another Enclave, which we've helped out previously. What a bunch of lazy bastards. I'll kick plenty of fucking zombie ass, and don't you fucking worry about that. And kick ass, I most certainly do. Eight hey, zombies on the on the rim, eh? But the problem with my loud tactics is it tends to attract more zombies than it kills. Quite funny, I know there's gonna be people shouting at me in the comment section. You just you know using silence weapons. So of course the zombies are gonna go Oh my god, this why are they just gathered here? Is it possible for Mickey to die? I really hope not, because I've got rather attached to that old bastard. I think the game's bugged because I can't find the final two zombies, but luckily I don't need to complete the infestation to collect the part he needs. I give him what he needs, but like every other father figure in my life, he abandons me. But at least this one left me with some toys to play with. That sounds fun. Our day out has really taken its toll on bones, so I decide to take him back to base so I can give him a big old rest. The Varmint Scout. Oh uh, no, sorry mate, we don't help pedophiles. So I check bones into the infirmary, then take over as everyone's favourite Red Talon agent. But Mickey's been on the phone again because we're BFFs, and it seems he really needs my help. Off I go in the middle of the night, for no apparent reason, for the stranger. <laughs> I'm such a good guy. On this occasion, to save time and petrol, I take a shortcut across the farmland. Who gives a fuck about agriculture? It's not as if we need food during the zombie apocalypse, especially when I can spend my internet points on a burger shot. I wonder how that enclave's getting on. But it turns out Juggernaut and Hostile are just living in harmony. No, they don't care, in fact. They've just, they went back to bed. This might require some interference from me. Maybe we'll stop by them later. I meet up with Mickey and I don't know what it is, but he just makes me burst into song. Mickey, you're so fine, you're man, you blow my mind. Hey Mickey, hey Mickey. Together we drive through the mountains because he wants to pick something up from his former family home. But on the way we stop by one of his former stashes. There's barely anything useful in here. Nope, nothing new at all. Nothing new at all. With no more detours, we make it to Mickey's former home. Damn, dude, your old house is fucked. Look at the state of this place. We gotta kill all the zombies, so I use one of Mickey's explosive fire things. And with fire combined with Terry's kick-ass abilities, we defeat the hordes with relative ease. As well as a murderous scumbag, I'm also an incredibly skillful detective. And after a bit of detective work, I decipher that the army was sure to arrest his arms. But instead of going quietly into the night, she blew the house up and everyone 
right-hand side. Bitches be crazy, am I right, Mickey? But if I'm being honest, you've got to respect that dedication. There's not going down quietly, and then there's blowing up your goddamn house. Anything here you want? Just take it. I'll find what I need somewhere else. Uh, mate, this fuck all you. After that disappointment, I just leave him there. But on the way past, I've obviously got to check in on that hostile enclave. Ah, look at that. Peaceful. So I move in for a closer look. Two juggernauts fighting a single guy. Sure, that can't go wrong, right? I get out of the car and rain hellfire with Mickey's fire fuel bomb things. Ah, that poor guy. Me standing here was actually a great distraction. Because instead of focusing on the juggernauts, she kept trying to aim a shot at me. And being tag teamed by two juggernauts is too much for one NPC to handle. That poor, poor thing. And it seems my taunting has angered the other members. Are you really coming at me right now? And as I love to fill these videos with tips and tricks, military grade machine gun beats shovel. You still want to come at me? So I drop her with my machine gun and leave her screaming in the dirt so she's juggernaut food. But juggernauts are actually really messy eaters and just tend to leave the majority of the remains scattered across the road. But that's actually great for the ecosystem as all of the smaller zombies are able to feast on their leftovers. On the way back to base, I run into a bloater. No, no, no! But I'm calling bullshit on that one. This wasn't the end of the world though as I was never going to make it back with that much petrol. After the cloud dissipates, I decide there's got to be fuel in this mechanics garage. I'll also take a uh, repair kit. Look at the state of my car. However, a player cart's actually taking it over. Okay, that's not good. That is not good at all. I didn't realise there was going to be a player cart here. I do find a fuel can and a toolkit. I then make, frankly, the stupidest decision by trying to take out the player cart while I'm this heavy and in this condition. As you might expect, this goes amazingly. Shit! Oh no! Ten minutes! We gotta go! That's probably the smartest thing I've said in this video. However, when escape and a whore takes out my door, and you can probably work out where this one's going. Oh god! No, 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 no! No! The feral rips me out of my car, and this could be the end of Terry. And his fat ass might take up two beds, but I've really grown attached to this big bastard. Luckily, Snap Aim comes in clutch once more. And I genuinely think that might have just saved his life. Jesus. Right, we need to go. No, no, no. Seven minutes. Go, go, go. Drive, drive, drive. Oh, shit. Okay, we're in desperate need right now. I'm sorry for anyone who was hoping for another tragic end. As a little while down the road, I'm able to pull over to refuel and repair. And after that, I get back to base with no more issues. And I'm able to sort myself out with a cure. I then swap characters, but make a mistake as I try to leave. Nope, 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 nope. Oh, you pain in the arse. And this being nightmare zone danger is never too far away. Oh, that's a double jug. I'm sure that won't come back to bite me on the arse later. <laughs> but juggernauts aren't the only thing out to get me. Suicidal ferals, what are you going to do with them, man? And single ferals are the least of my concern. Oh, look, it's a pack of the fuckers. But I'm well equipped for every situation. So allow me to explain my plan. I've come all this way to visit these dodgy soldiers for two reasons. I need a ton of influence so I can claim a new home site. The Farmland Compound. Universally accepted as one of the best bases in the game, if not the very best. Its central location is ideal for launching special operations, wireless default facilities, and numerous open slots make this base extremely customizable. It's just one little problem. It costs three and a half thousand influence. So I sell my valuable shite to the soldiers, then recruit one of their members for cannon fodder. This is because I need to take out two player carts in order to make the farmland compound claimable. I suppose the first thing we do is taking out this infestation right next door to you. Basically, I'm trying to help them out, like, you know? Together, we double team the first plague zombie we see, but I'm questioning my choice of teammate. Yes, that, that, there, yeah, because you whipped out your pistol and started firing at them, you silly bitch. I lob a molly and headshot the three screamers, and together we fight taking out the rest of the infestation. And this time I even managed to take out the final zombie. I set a waypoint to my first player card. That might be one of the ones I need to take out just to claim the base that I want, you know? And if it's not, at least I'll get a crap ton of influence. Especially as before I left the base, I activated satellite broadcast to get an extra 20% influence for the next 45 minutes. But on my way, I get distracted by more suicidal ferals. In fact, in fact, I get distracted by many wandering hordes. I don't know why I feel the need to have to like mow down every single horde that I drive past. I think that's, again, that's like the hoarder in me, you know? I get to the farmhouse where the play cart has formed, and there's only two wandering hordes on my tail. I park with my driver's door blocked so I can't get ripped out by the zombies. Oh, I mean, scouts still need your help. Hey, listen, I turned down the pedophiles in the last fucking video, all right? I ain't sticking with them now. I risk hepatitis and charge through the window. I then pop a Red Bull to unleash the beast and get ready to party like I'm a rock star. And me and my heavy shovel really love to go to town on this bit. I dodge the incoming zombies before deciding my best bet was to burn the whole thing to ground. Time to go. Oh shit, feral time. But it just goes straight for the cannon. F I mean, the teammate. It goes for my teammate. I go for another round of incineration and definitely don't cinch my eyebrows in the process. Nope, I am not on fire. It wasn't me. I retreat to allow the zombies to spread. Then, like an inconvenienced American, I whip out the shotgun. Shit, I'm on the radar. Ah, well, at least my cardio's going up. Most important rule of zombie land. My BFF, whose name currently escapes me, gets surrounded by the undead and I fear the worst. <laughs> 
No, you can be fine. Look, I've sorted you out. Proper. Luckily, two final hits with the heavy shovel takes out the heart. Sweet. Oh, but this feral's still here. But this game doesn't excel at close quarters combat. Someone take out this fellow, please. Oh, thank you very much. I make sure to loot the player cart, but sell all the random shite I can't carry to the cannon fodder. Oh, well, there's a, that's a horde and a half now. I then get distracted by another wandering horde. I use a molly to thin out the regular zombies, but my mate just charges in there with no thought of her own survival. After the fire dissipates, I move in for an easy kill. She's such a great teammate. There's all the distracting for me. But as I take out the last armoured zombie, she takes massive damage. Oh, really? You're gonna get murked by a bloody regular zombie? That's embarrassing as fuck, that is, though. After that, I make my way over to my future home site with the hope that I can locate a couple of player carts on the route. But while searching, I, like, seriously fuck up. Oh, no. No, no, no. Oh, God, that's not good. That is... Really not good. But luckily the jug's charge hit me just enough to unstuck me. But thanks to the juggernauts for, you know, giving me a gentle knock. <laughs> that could have been really bad news. After all that agony, I'm still yet to find the player cart that's claiming my home site. Your heart here, maybe? Yeah. Fantastic. I once again park tactically, but disaster strikes when I try to down a Red Bull. Oh shit. <laughs> Wrong button. I meant to use the stim. You got a question decision to have the same button, give you life saving stamina, while also potentially burning yourself alive. Thanks to my mate distracting the whole outside, I use my heavy shovel to face the player cart. But its natural defense fills my lungs with a nasty gooey substance. My next step is to naturally retreat, and I do so dodging carefully past a feral. I then kill him with a bunch of 22. You might not have been able to see it because my head was stuck in a bush, but the game doesn't just give you 12 influence for nothing. Meanwhile, my mate's just getting pounded harder than an adult website. Oh no, Glove, I got you! What can I say? She's obviously one lucky girl to have a guy like me looking out for her. And with that whore dealt with, I'm able to charge back in with my heavy shovel and go to town. Oh, Another feral. Jesus Christ, these things just come out of nowhere. Like a lad with premature ejaculation. Yep, that's not good. Pop a pill. But my escape is even less good. Have I got any? Oh, shit. While on the floor, I get pounded by the feral and the horn. Oh, my God. Then my mate just flat out abandons me. What a bitch. Just stop following me. Issues have been made. That guy's got no arms. He's still trying to eat me. God, how desperate are you, you pricks? Another two swings of my heavy shovel takes out the player card. Jesus Christ. Well, I mean, that could have definitely gone smoother, really, couldn't it? Let's be honest. I loot everything necessary from the player card. Then while leaving, I notice my former friend has left a rucksack just lying on the floor. She didn't have much honour at the time that she abandoned me, but I'll sure I'll put that frag to great use. Seeing as we've had our ass kicked quite severely so far, I decide it would be a great idea to heal back at base. But on the way back, I run into another feral pack, and it seems they're learning. Oh no, 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 no! The ferals are no longer suicidal! No, I take that back, they kind of are. With chaos mildly avoided, I make it back to base. I then take over as Loren as Jamie checks into the infirmary. And after getting my spanner out, it's not long before I'm back on the road. And as I'm leaving, I decide to lure the double jug horde away from base. You're trying to get him away from home, you know? I'm, I am a good guy after all. Well, I try to be. The next player card is set up similarly to the previous one. And I get the first phase out the way with my double bladed axe. I then finish it off rather easily from the roof of my car. Shut up, stop looking at my health. There's definitely not a story to be told by there. I'm now able to claim that. However, I don't have enough influence. But I do have a plan, and that plan is a fucking good one. Even if I do say so myself. For what feels like the 16th time today, I head back to base. This playthrough really isn't doing a lot for the environment. I really hope nobody tags Greta. I really don't fancy being cancelled. But on my way back to base, I accidentally create something that's utterly terrifying. Well, that's hell of a horde, that is. I park up and wait for the feral to top himself on the boot of my car. And while distracted with one horde, I have another approaching from the other side. Oh! No! No! I desperately tried to reverse out there, but they got me pinned in a narrow valley. Oh, no! <laughs> Using my advanced driving maneuvers, I take out a screamer with my arm. That is like a mega horde now. Jesus Christ. At least they're far enough away. But are they far enough away from base? I'm majorly conflicted, and at this point, I'm less than 200 meters away from So home. I decide to get out and go with the old blow and run tactic that would make you incredibly popular on Grinder. Get it quickly! No, you're going in the back, you silly prick! Oh, my God! There's zombies coming after you! Moron. Moving on, back to the planet hand. Can anyone remember this fine piece of cinema? If not, you can check out the link in the description. And in order to pull off that utterly chaotic plan, I had to use the duplication glitch to get that many grenade launchers. And, well, they're just sort of sitting around gathering dust. Back to the soldier dudes, right? I'm sure they'll be completely fine with the fact that I'm not with their mate. Oh, for Christ's sake. I am completely turtled now. That's well, a good thing the juggernauts aren't here anymore. Using the radio, I managed to unstuck myself. But that uses a surprising amount of fuel. Now I've got nearly no fuel. That was a waste of time. So after another quick pit stop, I head out to sell my shit to the soldiers and even take out another pack of ferals on loot. Man, I should call this video Suicidal Ferals. Them motherfuckers just... Don't quit. Hi, guys. Hope you're good. And so... 
about your friend. Yes, she decided to leave. But nothing to do with you. Oh, really? They can't afford it? Tight ass bitches. What kind of soldiers don't budget for grenade launcher usage? Honestly, these law don't deserve that girl who ran away from them. So instead, I decide to head to a wandering trader who's bound to have more influence than a titty streamer. And thanks to my reputation of being the greatest speedrunner in this game, despite the fact I've never done a speedrun ever, I get to the wandering trader quicker than you can say like and subscribe. Can we ignore the fact there's a whole next door? It's better to be safe than sorry. And if it all goes wrong, at least I got some backup in the form of the trader. Plus, it's been a while since you've seen me display my expert stealth ability. But this is what separates me from everyone else that plays this game. I have a superpower that makes infestations just get even bigger. Well, at least she's actually competent. She may be competent, but I still have to do the majority of the heavy lifting. And then it's time to trade. How do you not have enough to trade? Why won't anyone buy my grenade launchers off me? After this devastation, I decide to pick up a mission. Maybe they'll have enough influence for a grenade launcher. Go meet Max, see what he wants, see if he'll be able to trade me. And if not, at least the mission will give me vital influence. I meet up with Max, but this bloke just doesn't stop talking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever. Whatever, shut up, shut, shut up. And listen, do you want to buy a grenade launcher? But he too is poorer than Tory Britain. But Max seems like a cool guy, so I decide to stick with him for five. Although I think it's fair to say Max immediately regrets becoming my friend. The juggernaut has forced the car to become stuck on the shipping container. Okay, you know what? We're abandoning the vehicle. Rather predictably, the car bursts into flames, and Max gets pummeled by the double jugs. Oh, Max, 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 Max. I'm so sorry, mate. You know what? I think Max is on his own, guys. The mission unfortunately fails, either because I abandoned him, or because he was involved in the most violent spit roll ever posted to the internet. His death mixed in with the explosion of my car has left me in a tricky situation. Funny I wasn't so weighed down by grenade launchers. <laughs> I don't think I'd make it back to base in my current state. Luckily I find a car nearby, but unfortunately it's out of fuel. Luckily I know there's a petrol station nearby, although as it's not appearing on the map, it's probably claimed by a play car. I then try to take a cheeky shortcut over this fence, but my guy's like, nah, I'm alright, but I'd rather get stuck in this wall. Use the radio command to unstuck me from my current situation. Oh great, yeah, you could have put me in a better place, I'll be honest with you. I then get charged by a feral and have to take him down with my shotgun, but the loud blast causes a nearby horde to start chasing me. It's definitely could have gone Better. I take refuge on a nearby caravan, and this brief resting moment gives me an opportunity to come up with a cunning plan. But like usual, the only plan I've got is hit and fucking hope. I just want to put enough distance between me and this horde so I can backtrack and quickly search one of these fuel pumps. That turns out to be harder than you'd imagine, especially when bloaters get involved. But as the sun sets, I see my gap and I take it. I gotta rest. You can rest when you're dead, mate, which might not be too long to be fair. I manage to grab a can of fuel and run like my life depends on it, which technically it definitely does. Although in hindsight, this would have been so much easier if I'd left all the grenade launchers in the boot of this car. With the car refueled, I head back to base extremely carefully, as I'm almost certain this car is one light gust of wind away from detonating. And unfortunately, you don't get to laugh at me losing yet another car as I make it back to base with no issues. I take over as Terry, who's our best character, due to him being from Red Talon. But unfortunately, we're still a thousand influence away from where we need to be. So after repairing our new ride, Terry takes off in the dark for one final adventure. The plan is to meet up with Isby, who we briefly met at the Mad Scientists previously. She needs a hand with something, and I need a fuck ton of influence, so it seems like we're a match made in heaven. Ooh, what's with all these double jug hordes? Jesus Christ. Oh. And who leaves cars just parked in fields? In the middle of the night of all places. I meet up with Isby, but she's gonna be in the worst base I've ever seen in my life. After defending the lady's honor, we head off to check out her old base, as she left something valuable behind. I can do this. I can do this. What do you mean? You're not even fucking doing anything, you silly soft. We get to her old base, but it's overrun with a ton of plague zombies. And this silly twat needs to be a gentleman and keep her alive. Could you slow down a bit? Slow down? Love, have you seen how many freaking zombies are in here? I managed to keep her alive, but you're never officially part of the team until I've set you on fire. Oh, Izzy's on fire. She searches for her shit while I keep her alive. I'll be done in just a sec. Yep, yep, take your time, love, take your time, it's alright. And once she's found it, she asks me to take her back to where I picked her up from. Of all the places she wants to go, though, I have no idea why she wants to go to the unfinished gas station. It's the same place she was hiding out in. It's claimed by a play car, and there's no walls. Crazy bitch. I drop her off and completely abandon her as soon as I see that mission complete sign. While I'm over here and 60% of my way to permanent infection, I decide it would be a great idea to take out a couple of play cards. The first is dead easy, as I'd already softened it up in the previous episode. I even take out the feral in the 
most badass way possible. Yeah, don't think so, bitch. The next heart was a fair bit harder, seeing as I had a whole chasing me down. But after smacking it about a bit, and after fighting yet another pack of ferals, like, look at this shit, I'm not even messing about with a spiky car. I just slap them up with ease, and all I need is an incredibly overpowered red talon guy mixed with a snap aim ability. I genuinely might be the best person to ever play this game. But like a certain purple Marvel villain, I am inevitable. And after that, I decide to go home and enjoy an incredibly successful day. No, of course I bloody don't, because a random stranger has asked me to help her get vengeance on another enclave. God damn it, it's like these people know I'll do anything to see blood. That and I'm also incredibly desperate for as much influence as humanly possible. So me and my new friend Christine of the Scattered Survivors head to the other side of the map deep into plague territory to claim vengeance. And we all know from the previous episode that hostile survivors in Nightmare Zone are no laughing matter. After slaying some blood plague, I move in. And when I say I move in, I kick in the bloody door. And back up, ready to lob a frag grenade. But unsurprisingly, they don't fancy being blown up today, so decide to charge at me. But that doesn't go too well for them, as they're carrying guard and hope, and I'm equipped with military-grade weaponry. The last hostile tries to escape, but with a jug up his arse and me in front of him with an automatic rifle, he stands literally no chance. But I have a feeling that Juggernaut's gonna be a massive pain in my ass. Follow up with Christine. No, Christine, you need to get in the fucking car. She manages to limp her way into the car, but there's a plague zombie on the bonnet. But everyone knows that Toyota's greatest weakness is some light tapping on the hood. Okay, yep, yeah, this is not good, Christine. But I do have a repair kit. I'm trying to get out the car, though. She abandoned me as soon as the car set on fire. And let's be honest, the smartest play I can do here is just to abandon But her. all I gotta do is follow up with her and I'll complete the mission. And that should leave me with enough influence to claim a new base. But it turns out, Christine... Christine majorly suffers from main character syndrome. No, stop shooting the pissing thing! Stop it, Christine! Christine's desperate need for attention forces me to do what I don't want to. I must take down this juggernaut, I must complete Christine's mission, and I must move to the best base in this game. Christine, I'm so close to getting... Alright, Christine, I'm now infected, love. Two videos on row, uh, Teddy's been infected. I've got less than ten minutes to get to safety and get some player cure. Fucking speak to me now. Quickly. I get that glorious mission complete alert and a hundred influence for my troubles. Now I just need to repair my car and I'll be able to safely drive back to base to collect a play cure. But I don't know if it's glitched or just taken way too much damage, but it won't allow me to repair it. I managed to climb to safety, but I've only got seven and a half minutes to save Terry's life. I need a vehicle. I'm gonna have to I'm just gonna have to get a vehicle. My last play is to call a vehicle, but that cost me a thousand influence. But it'll be worth it if I can only keep my red talon character alive. I'll have to move base in the next episode. At the moment, my main concern is just getting Terry back alive. I'm not even afraid to risk the blunt force trauma. Alright, well, I haven't got time to go around. We're taking the shortcut. As I drive head first off a collapsed bridge. And I don't even take a smidge of damage. Do I get style points for landing? Because that was pretty cool. Let this be a lesson and always wear your bloody seatbelt. But this is unfortunately where I have to give you some bad news. No! But at least he's had a fantastic ride. From the point I picked him up from that abandoned house, the barrel rolling him in the back of my pickup. Together we destroyed many play carts and set many friends on fire. We took down countless hostiles and, uh, Several friendly people. Taken before he had reached his final stage. Can I get an R.I.P. Terry in the comment section? Is what I should be saying. But Terence the Red Talon guy is built different. He jumps out of his car with less than three minutes remaining. He climbs to safety on top of a shipping container. And he waits for that cloud to dissipate before running back into the vehicle. This is desperate times. Desperate measures. I don't even know if we're going to be able to make it. Oh, I'm going to make it. Even if it's the last thing I bloody well do. I avoid the horde of double jug. The feral packs are too scared to spawn. And I kick in that gate with just over a minute remaining. Okay, people. Time to fight. Oh no, fuck off. No, I forgot about that. I throw Terence into the infirmary and use a less exciting character to finish the siege. I'm then able to craft a cure from leftover zombie remains, cram it all into a hypodermic needle I found outside. I then stick Terry in the neck with it. Well, this has been an utter fail. Today is going to be a very special day in State of Decay 2. Yep, I'm avoiding them like the plague. Noob, 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 thank you. In fact, this is one of the first times that I've actually gone out without the impaler. Impressive, if you ask me. But that's not the reason today is a special day. Today, we will be finally moving to our dream base, whether it kills the entire community or not. A lot of plague zombies around here. No, it's not. Chill out, bro. But to afford it, I still need another 1100 influence. So I've accepted a mission that's only 44,000 kilometers away. They need fuel and I have abundance due to my addiction to Molotovs. Oh, uh, well, that was close. I've also brought an assortment of other valuables, you know, hiking backpacks and grenade launchers. But the utter morons have set up right next to a bloody play car. You. 
bitch. Jesus Christ. I give her my rucksack of petrol, and now we are friends for life. How much influence did I get? 100 influence. Okay, not so bad, not so bad. Another 1100 to go, I want to say. I also didn't realise this at the time, but they're offering me a bed and breakfast perk. So if anyone fancies a romantic weekend away, let me know, because I got the hook up. But unfortunately, it's not all good news. Oh, for Christ's sake. Nobody wants to buy my grenade launchers. So I settled with selling off the rucksacks, then loot the local area with a plan of selling it all back to the dwellers. Thankfully, I catch this screamer before he alerts anything bigger, although I do get caught by a horde of armored zombies. Goddamn army dudes, why do they all hang out in the army tent? Is that a fucking juggernaut? What? Yes, it is a juggernaut. Great. Well, surely he's not gonna be able to get in here, right? Thanks to the fat fucker's inability to bend his knees, I'm able to loot nearly the entirety of the tent and escape. I'm just saying, there's no way he can get in. Don't work harder work smarter. With my pockets full of military grade equipment, I run back to the dwellers to sell it to them. This earns me a decent amount of influence, but it's never enough. I see a juggernaut nearby. You see a juggernaut nearby? Yeah, it's right outside your bloody house, you silly bitch. We also have a really close run in. <laughs> that was close. Way closer than I thought it was going to be. I also want to loot this landmark outpost that people in my stream chat are always raving about. But I attract the attention of a horde of blood play. Smart play here would be to run. But I'm not a smart man. I also haven't got gunslinger. But what I do have is a James Bond style spy pistol and a ton of 22 caliber ammo. Okay, and a sledgehammer. With the last few of them taken out. Oh, avoided that like the fucking plague, didn't I? I get charged by a juggernaut while searching a nearby container. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. But I'm one speedy. Boy. Oh, look at that though. I'm quick as fuck, you little prick. You didn't expect that to do, but did you? I'm telling you now. I loot the entirety of the landmark outpost, and if one of you intelligent motherfuckers in the comment section could let me know what the benefits of having this as an outpost would be, that would be great. So here's the situation we're currently in. The first thing I sold was the blood plague cure, which prices me out of a deal for anything else. Also, how the fuck is a case of tampons more valuable than the cure to the zombie virus? After I've depleted the dwellers of all of their influence, I have three grand to play with. Luckily, I only need another 500, so on that note, I'll see you later, boys, all right? I always make the best tactical decisions. Whee! And as you all know, it very rarely goes wrong for me. Only I could get this stuck. I make it out thanks to the radio command, and for my next influence gaining quest, I'm off to meet Isby, who we met previously. And you'll be glad to know my evasive manoeuvres are just getting better. Oh, shit. I arrive at the shopping centre that Isby's hanging out in, and she explains she's got a really important mission she needs a hand with. She's chatting shit about satellites and that, but I'm searching the freezers for Adderall. Oi, less judgement, please. It's the bloody apocalypse, man. We all need our own vices to get through the day. Anyway, you know me, I'm always happy to help. Especially when it can benefit me in the long run. I find booze and zannies in the boot of a broken down car. But while I'm looking for a good time, Isby gets attacked by a feral. And even without gunslinger, I'm an absolute beast with a pistol. Jesus Christ, Isby. You've only been here 30 seconds, love. No, oh, she won't let me trade a fucking grenade launcher either. Together, me and Isby set off to go check out some massive ass lake or something. But she just won't shut up about satellite and AI. Jesus Christ, she's cringier than Elon Musk. So we rock up at the location, and we gotta make sure to clear out all the nearby zombies before she can start with her hacker thing. But Isby gets around in, and I got one round in the chamber. With no time to reload, I do what I've gotta do. What I'm here for, guys. What are you expecting from me? Don't give me shit in the comment section. But what you can do is let me know your favourite thing in the comment section. It doesn't even have to be about the game. If you like ducks, just let me know. And no, I will not have you accusing me of using dirty tactics to boost my video in the algorithm. That would be unethical. Now we've killed all of the zombies. She can start her hack, but that's going to attract more zombies. And this time, I'm going to have to bloody fight them on my own. Okay, I'll do my best. Okay, I'm going to move this away then. I don't want to lose the van. What, 42 bullets in that gun. And in that one... And plenty in that gun. But I got no gunslinger. Well, I don't bloody well need gunslinger. There's a reason they call me the zombie slaying John Wick. And it's not because I'm terrible at saving the lives of innocent puppies. So I swing that hammer. I twat that skull. I insta-kill with a single button press. That's it, that's it, that's it. Is he not have my hard drive space already? Well, you should have upgraded to 5G. That doesn't make sense, I know. Come on, bitches. At least there's no ferals or jugs. I don't think I'd have the ammo for that. I'm able to take out the last couple of zombies without any issues. With the hack complete, she's now got to do something else a little more techy. But I think she might have had a couple of my zannies mixed with that dented beer can I found earlier. Because she's about five metres away from the Cleo drop. Can you speed up a bit, Isby? There's a massive horde coming from over that direction. She claims whatever the hell she did works. So she thanks me. Yeah, no worries, love. Then decides to save petrol for the trek home. Oh, she's just off on the run, is she? All right, then. Listen, love, this is how you take out fucking zombies, all right? Watch out. Boom. 
After that, I decided it'd be best to take the van back to base before it blows due to my own incompetency. And on my way, I've gathered a couple of rucksacks, so this van is actually quite valuable. Oh, look, another jerk. Oh, double jerk. Oh, okay. So I don't get caught up with one of them. <laughs> I arrive home, transfer my spoils of war, take out a horde of lurking screamers, then craft a monumental amount of molotovs. Because there's a metric fuck ton of infestation south of the base, and I still need another couple of hundred influence. Seems like a job for Terry to me. Little did I know that this was well and truly gonna come back and bite me on my ass. So I arrive at the first infestation, making sure to park in a safe location. That's when I make my discovery. What happened to my Molotovs? The Molotovs are in the pocket of my previous character, Bones. I suppose this should be a lesson to me. Planning is important and you shouldn't change character at the last minute. But no bother, I'm able to finish off the infestation with no issues. Let's be honest, the smart play now would be to retreat. Get off my door! I'm underprepared and one false move in Nightmare Zone could be fatal. But I suppose you could say I'm a sucker for punishment. You know what? Maybe I'll a masochist. Either way, I finish off this infestation with no issues. The third infestation is also incredibly easy. Seeing as they're all trapped in a little tiny shack, this is where my spray and pay tactic really comes into its own. After number three is taken care of, it's on to number four. Because that's how ascending numbers work. But numero four is where everything goes horribly wrong. Look at this dickhead. He spends one weekend on a Spanish island and he thinks he's Rafael Nadal. What an absolute belly. I pop a tactical retreat but make a terrifying discovery. Oh, great. Well, I'm not going to take him out. So I show off while the comment section call me one speedy boy, mixed with a sick forward roll and shoot the bastard in the face. That's when I realise I've only got 24 bullets remaining. And that will never be enough to take down this big brute. Again, the smart play here is to run. But you don't subscribe for cowardly content. You don't subscribe to watch a little bitch boy run back with his tail between his legs. You subscribe to watch this overly aggressive Welshman suck at this bloody video game. But truth be told, I'm too fucking good at this game. Got him. And that's all it takes to take out a jug nightmare. Just a couple hits with the arse of a spiky car. Why are you accusing me of cheating for? No, I did not edit out a nearly five minute long segment of me ramming the bastard with my arse. I'll be honest, for the last infestation I was all puckered out. So I park up in a safe location, attract the hordes outside, then climb to the safety of the roof of my car. They whip out the radio. Clio fire support. What's the point in having over 40,000 prestige from my 626 victories in daybreak? Which definitely wasn't gifted to me when I accidentally ended up in a modded lobby during stream. But anyway, this allows me to stand safely and wait patiently for other people to sort out my issues. I do have to take out the final zombie myself, and that's when I realise you actually get an incredibly low amount of influence for taking out infestations. Okay, so that might have been a waste of five minutes of your life, but that was nearly half an hour of mine. Just be grateful you get to watch the edited down versions of this shit. Anyway, I arrive home safely, but after all that, I'm still 30 influence short of my mega base. Luckily, a wandering trader has spawned fairly close, so I collect all of my valuables, ready to flog them for mass profit. And this might be where we get the biggest plot twist in State of Decay 2 history. As I find someone with enough influence to buy my bloody grenade launcher. Actually, she's still got 300 influence left. I should have brought another one. I've now got so much influence I decide to buy an RTX Stormbringer with what I got left over. Now it's finally time to build my dream home. But I fucked up again. Is it possible for me to make it with this little fuel? Not when there's a massive mountain in the way. Jesus Christ. I decide to check the boot of a van nearby. But a pack of ferals has other ideas. Luckily they must have been listening to emo songs all day, because they just end themselves on the arse of my car. Unfortunately, there's no fuel in the van, but that's alright, because apparently I packed one earlier. Oh, I did bring fuel. Ha, <laughs> what a tit. After that semi-disaster, I now have enough fuel to make the journey to the centre of the map, and get to the farmland compound. This is about to get real, boys. This is about to get... Oh, right, I got smash for it. I won't let that ruining of momentum stop me from having a good time, as I smack in the door and take out all the remaining zombies. Ooh, zombie threat at home. I wonder what's about to happen then when I move home. This is the channel that answers those kind of questions. Admittedly, usually accidentally, but it still counts. Then as the sun sets on a grateful Trumbull Valley, I claim the farmland compound as my new home. It's fair to say we're in the end game now. And look, our home is no longer under threat. This is where the hard work really starts. I start by repairing all of the damaged facilities, then remove all the rotting livestock from our home. Once everything is fixed or cleared away, the first thing I build is a red talon bunk room, which gives me five beds, but a morale penalty. But it's the zombie apocalypse you are meant to be bloody happy. Just be grateful you got a bed, you inconsiderate twat. I also mod my refugee clinic with a sanitizing machine. I then build a red talon workshop, which is basically a level 3 workshop, but will also repair my weapons passively. Unfortunately, I don't have anyone with utilities, so I can't build a hydrophonics. But that's alright, I'm happy to settle with a farm. The idea is, of course, to upgrade it later. Next up is the red talon watchtower, then upgrade in my storage. I mod the backyard barbecue pit with a stand mixer, then install another mod, this time to the sturdy bunk 
houses. And that mod is a comfy chair for plus three morale. Okay, maybe I do care slightly about the happiness of my people. One thing I couldn't give a shit about is my sea dress. Now, what to do with my three large outdoor slots? Seeing as I'm losing three materials a day, and that's only likely to increase as I build more stuff and upgrade it. I build a staging area to reduce my facility maintenance costs to zero. In hindsight, I should have built this first because this will also allow me to build faster. I then build an auto shop. This is mainly because I've never had one before, but it also helped with my fuel efficiency, and I can't wait to build some badass kits to make all of my cars look sick as fuck. My final large slot requires a leader, but who should take charge of this band of renegades? Yes, of course it's Terry, but this is supposed to be a Red Talon super base, so it makes sense to have a Red Talon as the leader. But what was his leadership trait? He's a trader, so we build a trade depot. And seeing as everything's gonna take at least 20 minutes to get built, it's time to move on to some recruitment. We're bringing in a Red Talon contractor and a Red Talon soldier. Let's go grab this one first, I reckon. But recruitment can never go bloody easy. No! I immediately throw myself out of the moving vehicle. Oh, for Christ's sake. How many times can that happen to one guy? I'm pretty certain that's the third video in a row that Terrence has set off a plague bloater. This is why I never leave the house. But at least he's not infected this time. Oh, should have set that to single. Me and my newly purchased Stormbringer take out the approaching hordes, including a bloody feral. Oh, and a jug. You know what? I think it's time to get out here. <laughs> Good thing I got that out of my system before meeting the Red Talon guy. <laughs> he never joined my team. I meet my new friend who's named Waldron, but he might be a bit cocky for my liking. I'm here to save your ass, buddy. Ah, well, there's always good to have someone in the community that you're willing to sacrifice to a juggernaut. Together, we drive over to meet our next new friend, who's called Gaz. And Gaz likes to play with plants and shit. But that's all right, there'll be no judgment for my cult, I mean community. We're all very inclusive and everybody's welcome. If I hadn't already done a call to action, I'd be asking you to like and subscribe. Anyway, we make it back definitely in one piece. Gaz has stopped following you. Well, welcome to your new home, Gaz. But there's one thing I need to change about Gaz. And whatever his fucking name was. I then make sure to dress them both appropriately in the cult robes. I then make a discovery of which I've never seen anyone talk about before. Oh wait, we got another outpost? Is that because I got another hacker? I didn't even know I could- Did anyone else know it was possible to get seven outposts? Maybe I just need a, an entire team of Red Talon hackers. That could work. At this point in our story, the blood plague mutates. The play cart starts sleeping and Terry sends Gaz out to wake him up to see what happens. This goes as exactly as you'd expect it would. No, 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 Oh god! Well this has gone horribly. But at least my newbie Gaz has increased his standing. Yes, his lungs have been filled with a poisonous toxic substance, but at least I've got enough influence to buy half a tin of baked beans. I continue shooting every zombie. In fact, I clear the entire area of the little bastards. So I set off some fireworks and stand there waiting for more to spawn. Oh wait, hang on, I just realised it's already awake. Ah, oh, what a fool. It's already awake, man. Yes, you actually woke it up about 30 seconds ago, you utter moron. Well, this isn't great. Not really, but I am a beast, so managed to escape and get to the next plague heart. It's gonna be an epic quest, guys. Ignore my plague meter, okay? I arrive in plague territory, but I'm unable to find the plague heart. I feel like shit. Ah, you'll be fine, mate. You'll be fine. But nothing will stop me on this mission, so I mow down enough zombies until the play cart stirs. After that, I just locate a screamer, which finishes off the job for me. Screamer, wake in the play cart. Cool. With two play carts awake, infestations are slowly gonna start forming. Especially as the noise level in my Red Talon super base is set to raucous. And basically, the more noise you have coming from home, the faster the infestations will spread. Maybe I should have brought more fuel for this. I awaken the next heart thanks to my world class sniping skills with a scoped pistol. Honestly, nobody can snipe like me. A screamer, wake the play cart. Happy days. I also find a can of fuel, so you no longer need to shout at me in the comment section for being a moron. But actually, now I think about it, comments are great for the YouTube algorithm. So crack on, son. Oh no! I got 10 minutes! But it seems I've lost my speedy boy abilities and get slapped about a bit. Now I got significantly less time. But don't worry, I know exactly how to handle this situation. Oh, great. Now everybody knows if you ever find yourself on fire, you stop, drop, and roll. But no one ever tells you about the negatives about burning your enemies. Oh, I'm on fire! No, Jesus Christ! I make sure to take out the zombies that are plaguing me, pun intended. That gives me the time and space to inject myself with experimental medicine. Thank you very much. So far, this mission has gone exactly how you imagine it would. So I pull into Pronto Gas and claim it as an outpost. That allows me to get a medikit out of my supply locker. Ha! Full health. And it seems I'm not the only one recovering from trauma. Burning lungs? Jesus Christ, Terry. Glad you recovered from that one. I then pop off an epic jump. Whee!
But that's nothing compared to the one I do later. Still working on that thing? No, probably not, love. Yes, I'm teasing content you've already selected to watch. Don't hate the player, hate the game. To awaken the next heart, I use fireworks to attract as many zombies as I can. But they simply refuse to all gather in a single horde, so I can destroy them with one firebomb. And honestly, I have no idea why my comment section is always telling me to stick to green zone. I'm just the greatest gamer of all time. And I'm definitely not overreacting just because I popped a couple of headshots. To be honest, the easiest way to get this done is just to rock up the plague territory and let the screamers do the work. But I just can't help but get my hands dirty. And because of my pro gamer abilities, I've maxed out my shooting stats so now I get snappy. This makes me incredibly efficient at dispatching the undead. Oh look, a plague feral! Not a plague feral, a pack of ferals. I know what I meant, shut up. This makes it incredibly easy to awaken player carts. So let's have a look at the situation we've gotten into so far. We have seven player carts awakened visible on the map, and a further two awake, but hidden. So slowly all of these player carts will release infesting hordes, which will slowly infest other buildings and even potentially my outposts. And if we're really lucky, we might be able to get a siege to spawn. But while we wait for them to slowly take over the map, our neighbours need their asses saved. I'm on the way, love, don't worry. Terrence will save you. Because Terry is the true second coming of Christ. Although I've only got three minutes to do it. Oh shit. But that's alright because I'll just dukes and hazard this shit to get there in record time. But when I rock up, the mini-map is flashing like a giant fucking Christmas tree. Defend the noisy neighbours from zombies. That'd be easy. Oh god, okay. He turns up and one's getting munched on already. But other than that, I'm surprised they even rang me. Look, you're doing fine just without me. Why do you even need me? But I suppose having the zombie slaying John Wick on your team is really good for morale. Together we take out the last zombies. That was almost too easy. Almost too easy? Then why the hell did you ring me on the radio crying like you bloody bitch? I then speak to my mate Isby on the radio, who we've been helping out a fair bit recently. And she's asked if I'll go and have a chat with an old friend of hers. Basically he's an ex-red talon guy and he might have access to like some special codes and shit. But now I'm thinking about it, this is actually extremely hurtful Isby. At the end of the day, Terence is red talon. Did you not think that I'd have the information you need Isby? Honestly I've never been more disgusted in my entire Life. But on my way to Chavez, I take the wrong turn in. Uh-oh. 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 Oh, shit. That was cool as fuck. That was amazing. Incredible. And I've got to be honest, I'm a little bit aroused right now. Anyway, I get to Chavez, who's living off grid like some kind of bloody hermit. I chat to him, but unfortunately doesn't have what we need. But he's a legend and agrees to help me find it. He takes me to his old headquarters, because this is where he stashed all of his mates' belongings after they died. Could have, like, cleared out the zombies that were there, though, can you? And there's only one way I know how to clear out this many zombies. Now that they've been taken care of, I'm able to search the tent and find the Red Talon codebook. But the game's glitched and it won't let me give it to Chavez. I have to sacrifice him. He shook off that headshot like a champ, but firing an unsuppressed weapon in a plague territory is dangerous work. But say what you want about me, I always make sure to help my friends. Maybe a little bit too close for my like into that car. I also burn out all of the approaching hordes from the safety of the roof of this vehicle. Oh shit. Who'd have guessed fire spreads? I wouldn't have. Neither would he, apparently. You can say what you want, but my tactics always work out. Ah, look, it worked! Never doubt my intellect ever again. I know I've successfully fixed a glitch. I'd like to offer my assistance to any gaming developers out there who need a hand. Moving on, Chavez pulls the old switcheroo on Isby and decides to keep the book, but will help her as long as she talks to him. I reckon they were banging at some point and then she decided to ghost him. Honestly, mate, that's like such an incel move. Don't be a dick like. The sun is starting to set, so I want to get back to base. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh my god. Did you hear the scream? Of Ooh. Okay. I know my preferred method of dealing with these fuckers. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Moving on, we get back to base and leave it on the map screen while I disappear for five. I'm off for a wander for no particular reason. I actually fucked off for about half hour in total with the hope of catching like a really cool time lapse of loads of infestations building. But all I got is this little guy going for a wander. Then my Xbox went idle and decided to show me all the achievements I haven't got yet. Oh, for Christ's sake, it ruined my time lapse! Who'd have guessed that idle Xboxes are the mortal enemy of filmmaking? What a bunch of bastards. Cinematography is the real victim of this crime. I then decide to do the biggest no no in State of Decay on higher difficulties by enlisting the help of one of my community members. Usually, the AI in this game isn't smart enough to handle higher difficulties, but I've got a cunning plan. I've recruited Loren for one simple reason his fifth skill is the least useful, and I plan on taking on a level 2 infestation which also has a juggernaut. So 
so I've given Loren my 50 cal, and seeing as the AI never use ammo, we've got an unlimited amount to take out as many juggernauts as we need. But first, I've been asked to check in on Ray Santos to see if he's alright or something. And he is, he's just hanging out in a tent nearby. But before we can crack on to the infestation, I get called back because it's time to siege. Well, I say it's time to siege, I'm not the one doing the sieging, the zombies are about to siege our home. But this has got to be the, like, the slowest siege in gaming history. So I decide to meet them head on in the field. And I'll be honest, I thought the siege was a bit underwhelming, seeing as they're only made up of one screamer, a bloater and four zombies. But I was so, so wrong. Because it's not the siege itself you want to worry about, it's the masses of freaks that that screamer will bring in with them. Oh, wow, yeah. With that many zombies, I do what I gotta do. Okay, great, not exactly what I needed, let's be honest with you. Especially as Loren seems insistent on fighting with his hands. But luckily, fuel bombs are a massive beast. Like, look at this shit, they basically take out the entire siege on their own. Although my only reward is five bloody influence. Fuck knows what I'm supposed to do with that, five influence isn't even enough to get you to follow me on Twitter. Hey, where you going? I'm right here, am I not good enough for you? But with their backs turned and them running away from me, it makes it incredibly easy for me to finish off the siege. Really? Well, that was sort of anticlimactic. But I may have spoken too soon. Oh, great, Jugs here. Well, I do have a plan for the Jugnaut. So I drop a landmine and retreat. But Loren's 50 cal comes in clutch. Well, that was pointless. Can I pick that back up? No? Guys, be careful. There's a mine right outside our base, right? Try not to stand on it. We haven't got the best medical equipment. And if you're an amputee, I'm sorry, but you're dying first. Let's head to the infestation. There's a Jugnaut there. And by killing that Jugnaut, I get some sick-ass weapon thing. Or an ammo mod. And I don't really want one of them. I want a sick-ass weapon. Technically, all we need to do is take out the Screamer. But I want everything dead. So I get all the goodies. It doesn't seem my plan will Loren is off to a flying start. Okay, great. So I plant my last landmine and retreat. But it seems the jugs just got a massive hard on for Loren. That shed has two screamers, two ferals, and two bloaters. So I lob a massive thermite grenade right at the door. Infestation done. Sick. Now all I gotta do is take out this juggernaut to collect all that sweet loot. I didn't even bring any healables with me. Didn't think I need them. No, but what I did bring was enough explosives to make Hiroshima look like a fireworks display. Dude, you gotta take out the jug. You got a 50 cal. Whip it out. He doesn't, but my frags do an incredible job at thinning the crowd. Same could be said for the fuel bombs, but that just makes the juggernaut a fiery threat to Loren. Hey, stop punching my friend. Even I get bitch slapped. Oh, shit. <laughs> but I do eventually get him to drop a knee so I can jump on his back and stab him in the head. Sit down, you bald prick. I only get the professional suppressor for my efforts, but I suppose that's better than a kick in the dick. Oh, great, now he whips out the 50 cal. Because he didn't want to use his 50 cal, Loren has contracted blood plague. And I've only got one plague cure. If this happens again, I'm going to have to euthanize you, I'm afraid. He cures himself, but there's no time to rest. You see, in my haste to set up an epic time lapse, I didn't bother to set any defenses for my outpost. That basically means that three of the four have now been taken over and are no longer able to supply me with daily goodies. So it's time to get them clear. The first is in my ammo shop, and when I hear a bloater pop upstairs, I know exactly what I gotta do. But my throw is what you'd class as embarrassingly short. That did not work. <laughs> but taking out the screamer is the most important thing. Loren then gets attacked by a feral outside, but I've trained for this moment my entire life. You really gotta remember to limber up those thumbs before you smash that A button. Next up, we move on to the vet that supplies us with medical supplies. Even though I did make a suggestion that a vet should supply us with food. Anyway, now that there's bloaters in every infestation, one firebomb takes out the entire crowd. That was a beast. The same could be said for my food outpost that's just down the road. One fuel bomb and one bullet get the job done. But this is where I start to get incredibly greedy. I should have just gone home and called it a successful day there. But I decide to take out one last infestation on the way back to base. But there's a juggernaut on the porch and two more within your shot nearby. Using my usual tactic, I clear the infestation easy enough. Oh great, so we got three juggernauts here right now. So I drop a bouncing Boris, but looking back, that might have actually made the situation worse. I know what you're gonna say, chat. Juggernauts are Im impenetrable to flame. But it's all about thinning out the horde that's around them. We get a couple of really close run-ins, by which I actually mean I definitely got hit. But disaster strikes as I line up a grenade toss. Oh, great. Oh, God. But that explosion causes them to do a synchronized dance. But not even a dance with a devil will stop me from jumping on his back and stabbing him in the back of the head. Ain't it funny to kill a jug you repeatedly stab it in the back of the head, but he'll walk off 45 point blank shots with a high calibered rifle. This is not ideal. Thank fuck I brought this many frag grenades. 
the second goes down, but the last one's taking a bloody good beat in. Get your 50 cal out, Loren! But of course he bloody doesn't. I've got to do all the heavy lifting. The juggernaut goes down, but it's fair to say the reward is incredibly disappointed. Really? Is that all I'm going to get? Five rounds? It took more than that to kill the fucker. Loren, we got to go, pal. We got to fucking go. Because what I believe is like the fourth video in a row, Terry's got blood plague. Honestly, this bloke has a worse immune system than a HIV patient. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't think so. Do not think so. You're not getting me in a bloater again, pal. Not again. But don't worry, I'm able to get back to base and save Terry's life. Terry's back, baby. This is the Echo Lab research station in Trumbull Valley, and without a doubt, it is incredible. And thanks to me recruiting a Red Talon hacker previously, I have a spare outpost slot that's just waiting to be filled. I could use a little help here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't we all love? We all need bloody help sometimes. Oh, no, no, no. I've done it again. I've done it again. I mean, I landed on the roof, but I got—I went for the double, so I'm taking that as a win. You can say whatever you want, but that guy knows how to bloody act. One thing I haven't mentioned so far, but you might have seen it in the intro, is the outpost is actually claimed by a player cart. So I'm armed to the teeth and ready for war. It's a weird place for a player cart, surely. Nah, uh, he's only saying there so we can't stand on the car and shoot it through the window like a cheating scumbag. Stick the green zone, noob. Actually, I just realised something. I can cheese this one. Oh my god, why didn't I not think of this? Honestly, I might be a moron. I'll pause by here just to give you time to comment. You are a moron. With the door blocking the only entrance, I should be able to take out the play cart with my heavy weapon and not worry about being disturbed by a bunch of nasty shit. Guys, I think I'm stuck. Really messed this up, haven't I? <laughs> so I'm forced to use the radio commands to unstick me, but I'm a right stubborn bastard. And when I stick my mind to something, you know damn well I'm going to see it through. So after moving the car out of the way, I close the door. Open it that way. There we go. <laughs> Look, I'm slowly learning. Then position the car so the driver's door will open up inside the shed. This is incredibly easy now. In fact, it's so easy is barely worth talking about. Look, they're all gathering outside, the fools. <laughs> but I'm obviously going to because it's YouTube and, well, watch time's incredibly important. I haven't even needed to fire a shot. Man, a thousand IQ move this. But I got too excited too soon. Oh, no. Oh, hang on. No. Okay. Yeah, too excited there. My bad. Jesus Christ. Only I could get bloody infected when it's impossible for a zombie to even touch me. There we go. Boom. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Cleo. So now with the area free of blood plague, I claim the Echo Lab research station as an outpost. I'm then able to choose one of three strategies, and I choose the biochem crafting, so I'll be able to make bloater gas and zombate. You'll see how I use them later in the video. Also, while I'm on this side of the map, I decide to loot the area for a bit, seeing as my addiction to Molotovs has caused me to run low on fuel. After that, I decide to head back to base. That is until I come across a massive hole. I've decided we need an actual fight. Obviously, the smartest play on higher difficulties is to avoid the fight. There there you go. That's what I'm talking about. But this is still a YouTube video and people need to be entertained. Especially as all of our attention spans have been fucked up by TikTok. I love this tactic though, man. Some might say that's a waste of supplies, but to them... I say supplies are only there for my entertainment. On my way past, I stop at another petrol station. Hey, look, it's another pronto gas, man. So I can gather more fuel resources and therefore make more stuff to burn. Come on, team. Gather in one neat circle for me. There we go. Thank you very much. Whoa, don't think so, pal. Woo. But it's fair to say things kind of escalate a bit. Look, there's just hordes coming from everywhere. Right, if you could all gather by there for me. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. But after managing to burn everything alive, I'm able to search the petrol station and find two fuel resources. After that, I'm able to head back to base. Oh, I almost got him. Oh, look, he's learning. Nah, he's not. And with no regard for craftsmanship of fencing, I unload all of my juicy loot. But I noticed some dodgy bastards wandering past, and they're on their way to infest a site near my home. Honestly, this must be how America felt during the Cuban Missile Crisis. But I handled the situation very differently than JFK did. Christ, if I was in charge of the world, probably would have been destroyed by nuclear war. I then decide to wait out the night. But it's not because I'm scared of the dark. It's just that my YouTube video will look a lot better in shining daytime. I actually use the trade depot for the first time and call in an ammo trader. I then scrap some shite I'm never going to use, then fill my pockets with valuables to sell. In fact, I even fill my van with an assortment of weapons I'm never going to use. I even craft a heavy vehicle kit so my cargo van can get hell of an upgrade. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Now we can survive the apocalypse, boys. Beast. You see, in my head, I was geeing up for a massive quest where I travel to the other side of the map to complete this trade deal. Oh, the ammo dealer even comes to us. I don't even have to go anywhere. What an absolute moron. Anyway, I sell a lot of shit. I also empty 
empty his stock of ammo supplies. At this point, you might be wondering what is the point of all of this? Well, let me tell you, I want a ton of bloody influence. And seeing as I've left that ammo trader with less influence than a cancelled YouTuber, I take on a mission to deliver some play examples. Terrible if I would do it a bloater right now. Jesus Christ. But play examples ain't the only thing I'm carrying. I've also stuffed my pockets with all the redundant mods I'm never gonna use. But I'll always refuse to use a door. Hey guys, I'm here to help. But unfortunately, they're only interested in the swarms of zombies I've attracted with my van. Can you stop shooting everybody, please? And accept my play examples so I can get my influence. I give them the three play examples they want, and I gain a hundred influence for my troubles. I also want to trade you a load of shit. And trade them a load of shit I do. Okay, these guys are poor. I don't know why I'm so surprised, as these guys couldn't even be asked to rip flesh off dying zombies. Anyway, I get back to base, but Trevor never seems to be far behind me. Come here, little fucker. But that's when I hit a stroke of genius. The independence trader. The firework launcher is going to be incredible for dealing with all of these hordes. But before I get the chance to purchase any fireworks, we get a hell of a blast from the past. Ulysses. Hang on, you're not Ulysses. But then again, my Ulysses uh, ended slightly differently. Again, I sell him a load of shite, which I'm sure the comments will tell me off for. But to make up for it, I buy every single firework this man possesses. Frankly, it's incredible I haven't used this weapon more. Then after crafting some zombies, me and my guy Forks Parade hit the road. And I got the perfect motherfuckers to test this shit on. You see, we have some hostiles that have moved into town, and you should bloody well know by now how we deal with hostiles. Come on, Jug. You're all coming with me. We're off on an epic adventure. So I lead the Juggernaut and every single horde I can over towards the hostiles. I then park a little up the ways from them. Don't know I'm here yet, I don't think. I run towards their home drop in a boombox. And surprisingly, they're not too appreciative about this. Whoa! Jesus Christ, they're going for me! I then hide behind my car like a massive pussy while the music blares into the distance. Floods of zombies then storm their position, including that nasty-ass juggernaut from earlier. And I haven't even run in aimlessly lobbing zombies yet. Okay, well, great. Looks like that didn't exactly work. So I try to shake him off by tracing my footsteps and lobbing more zombies. However, hostiles on Nightmare Zone are like John Wick on crap. Oh, shit! I've taken major hits! But not every story can have a happy ending. No! Waldrum! He's been shot and munched on, and his health and stamina are non-existent. But Waldrum's an absolute beast. Fight it off! Fight it off, son! But absolutely nothing can ever Ever stop this man. No, not again! Waldrum! The hostiles are moving in on my location, and so are hordes of the undead. Honest to God, these guys are fucking. Oh, and again! Waldrum! This looks like the end of Waldrum. Waldrum! No, 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 no. I can't quite explain how, but Waldrum gets away. This hasn't gone to plan, guys. This is where most people would run. Save the fight for another day. But I'm not that kind of guy. I blast my lord into her face, which is impressive as she's not even on her knees yet. Bitch. That's one down, two to go. Although I suspect that the Juggernaut might have finished off one of them. After that headshot, she's easily dealt with. Now they're dead, it's time to run for the fucking hills. Definitely could have done a better job of that. Again, I head back to base with absolutely zero regard for wooden fences. Waldrum takes a well-earned nap, and we take over as the fan favourite, Terence the Red Talon Contractor. And this time as I leave base, I promise to actually use the fireworks this time, because I want to take on some infestations. Well, that's until I come across a pack of ferals. My mortal enemy. To be fair, these guys are actually pretty sound. It's those armoured-headed pricks in Lethal Zone that do my Sweden. A level 1 siege site has formed near my base, and I'm about to show you why the firework launcher is the best weapon for dealing with this update. Doors get booted in, and I whip it out like I'm about to get cancelled. Yep, well, we got the infestation sorted. But there's still zombies present, and believe it or not, I haven't set myself on fire yet. Woohoo! Alright, well, I'm glad that's checked off the J Talbot bingo card. Next, we got a level 3. That's gonna include a juggernaut. I rock up with a harder shit power slide, then I blast the windows with fireworks. Now, I don't technically know if it's possible for fireworks to break windows. What is a firework physically made out of? I probably could Google it, but I'm way too lazy for that shit. Look at that! We did it! Questions uh, to be said about my rewards, but uh, uh, words don't make a lot of sense. Holy shit. <laughs> This is without a doubt my new favourite gun. Fuck the grenade launcher, I'm giving everyone in my community pyro launchers. Oh, hey, hey! Oh my god, this is so much fun! And you might have just noticed there's a juggernaut in the background, and I'm closer to the plague than the 1300s. But I've never run from a fight in my life, as long as you ignore the ones where I did. I'd retreat to the roof of my car to regain some stamina. And luckily, juggernauts have zero effect on cars. Uh-oh, this could cause issues. So I jump off the car, face-tap the feral, avoid the juggernaut's hulk smash, then stab a zombie in the top of the head. 
But if I'm gonna live up to the name as the Juggernaut Slayer, I can't leave. I can't run. I must fight until the bitter end. Oh, great. For fuck's sake, Terry. People are gonna start to think I'm doing this on purpose. I'm pretty certain that's like the fifth video in a row that Terry's been infected. At this point, I've gotta wonder. Maybe I'm the problem. I will end this Juggernaut. It's a level three infestation, which means I get sick loot. Fuck the fact your timer is counting down to zero. I need me a 50 cal. Is this cheating? I don't care. I managed to get a couple of hits on him, but then disaster strikes. Oh, oh no! But after watching this footage back, it very much looks like I did that on purpose. But I can promise you I didn't. I'm just that moronic. I'll be honest with you. I've been in better situations right now. And somehow I managed to get myself even more stuck. All while having a nine minute counter over my head. The radio command teleports me to a strategic position. And I deliver a back shot to end all back shots. Always carry protection, kids. And I thought we were supposed to get some sick loot from killing juggernauts. But all I bloody got was a 22. I stabbed myself in the neck to remove my status condition. We got so much plague cure, it's unreal. But this shit is far from over. Now, obviously, in hindsight, it would have made a lot more sense to take out this plague cart before the infestation, because that way the infestation would wither and die itself. But if I had done that, I wouldn't have ended up with a 22 caliber pistol. Anyway, I run in and swing my apocalypse bat at the heart. But if I'm being honest, it does very little damage. Well, it's a bloody good thing I brought more than a piece of wood with some nails stuck into it. Fire in the hole! The bouncing Boris I lobbed goes crazy, and I take a breather to regain stamina. It also seems a bloat has become a bit too personal with my car, but that's not going to slow me down from using a ridiculous amount of explosives, even if my own car is potentially collateral damage. Frankly, it's a shame I haven't got a firework sponsor to sell to my young and impressionable audience. Oh shit in hell! <laughs> I turn the pyro launcher onto the heart, Whoa! and even use the firework launcher while standing on the roof of my car. Oh shit. <laughs> but to be honest, its best use is definitely filling out hordes. I should be really worried by how much I like fire, but I get the final blow with my trusty baseball bat. There we go, that's what I like to see. After quickly looting the area, I head back to base. But not for very long, because it seems the stranded soldiers need some plague cure. And look, I give them plague samples like 30 minutes ago. Make some yourself, you lazy pricks. This level of incompetence needs to be punished. With death. This is going to be absolutely chaotic. Someone better be listening because I'm in deep shit out here. Oh, Tressie, will you do me a favor and fuck off? Moving on, I get to the stranded soldiers. Hey, team, I'm back. Nothing to, no, no, nothing to be suspicious about. Seeing as they shot out three out of the four windows, I do my bit to assist with the fourth. Well, might as well. But these guys are like proper loud and that, so hordes of the undead surround our location. But luckily, I'm the good guy in this story. I'm helping them. What a guy. I am, I just really am like such a class guy. I then tell them to find their own bloody rotten flesh. Well, remember, I do these things so you don't have to. And drop a bloater grenade on them. But that's only 50% of my plan. Hmm, interesting. I then properly test these guys' resilience. Apparently that guy doesn't mind being shot in the face. And neither does this guy. And as I'm sure you're aware, loud guns equal zombies. Oh my god, that might be the... Dullest zombie I've ever seen in my life. But seeing as they gathered together, why not lob another bloater grenade? Oh, bloody hell. And you know me, I just can't help myself. Fair play, they have excellent skin complexion. Even after all those Molotovs. I then continue the mental and physical torture of these guys by putting over 50 22 caliber rounds into his face. Wow, fair play. But you should know by now I'm not here to dick about with these guys. I'm letting you live for now. So beat it. But unlike my childhood, they refuse to beat it. Gather together. They, no, come on, this way. So I wait for that countdown to hit zero, then drop the zombie version of a nuke on them. The following Molotov sends two of them to scream into their knees, while the third does his best Velociraptor from Jurassic Park impression. But even after putting 45,000 bullets into him, the big guy just shakes it off. Although my next bloater grenade claims its first victim, and I show my speedy skills by ducking under a swinging machete. After a cheeky tactical retreat. I thin the hordes of zombies and take out the reanimated corpse of the baddie. Okay, yep, on the radar and slightly beat. Oh, no, 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 no! Can't lose a guy this early. How have two of them survived? But I managed to beat them off like I'm home alone and when in doubt. Pop a pill, pop a pill, pop a pill. Gather into a circle, gentlemen. You see, I've got one bloater grenade left and that's the best way to remove these guys. Fair play, Mike. That guy's got excellent stamina. Unfortunately, my chemical warfare plan backfires. Oh, shit. And my health drops lower than my standard after 15 pints. That might have gone wrong. And with my health and stamina held together more
more loosely than the Tory government, I eventually get my second kill. Die, you prick! For the third and final guy, I decide to really go psychological by abandoning him and leaving him to deal with the corpses of his friends. Oh, look, dude! There's the plague samples you wanted! It's fair to say that plan slightly backfired. After that, I decide to head back to base, seeing as I'm closer to death than Rolf Harris. Shit, people! Learn how to scout. Fuck off, Sasquatch. Prick. I get back, stick Waldrum in the infirmary, and swap to Gaz. And after loading up the impaler with a shit ton of gas, I head off to meet up with Isby. She's decrypted the Cleo signal or something like that. I'll be honest, I wasn't really paying attention. When I meet up with her, she's standing on the edge of the local Burger King. And I'll be honest with you boys, after eating one of their burgers, I'd want to throw myself off too. But apparently she's only up there because the signal's better, which, uh... If we're being honest, makes a lot more sense. Chavez is also here, and together we gotta fight off all the zombies the signals attracted. But if I'm being honest, I did just sort of leave him to it. Now, unfortunately, I don't speak Spanish, but after a quick Google Translate, he's actually saying like the video and subscribe because only 23% of you have. What an incredibly cringy thing to say, Chavez. I thought better of you, my friend. But it turns out Chavez can take an absolute beating. Wow, my guy's an absolute beast. I need a better view of this. He takes a bigger hit than Schofield's career. Meanwhile, his mate Isby is just stood there watching him get munched on. I mean, you could say the same thing about me, but I tell you to shut the fuck up and stop pointing out my hypocrisy. Dude is shaking off about three of these hits. What a legend. And this gives me an idea. So like my hair's dyed blue, I step out of my safe place and absolutely decimate the hordes of zombies. Honest to God, I bloody love a double-bladed heavy axe. I then go upstairs to chat to Wisby and she immediately throws herself off the roof. Jesus Christ, I didn't realise I had that kind of effect on women. Loot the nearby supply drops with Isby and Chavez. No, I don't think I will. You see, this is my master plan. After waiting for Chavez and Isby to stop dicking about with the zombies, all three of us load into my impaler and it's time to go on a little road trip and I'm gonna use these guys overpowered abilities to take out the remaining play carts. Oh my god there's a play cart sleeping. I thought I woke up all up. Oh my god I lied in a previous video. As punishment make sure to comment down below telling me I'm clickbait scum. For some reason I don't take out the play cart that's literally right next to me and continue my journey across the map to the marked one but it seems not all is right with the cult. Low morale? Why is she so mor- why is her morale so low? Bloody pussy. I get to the house that's claimed by a play cart, then grab my explosives out of the boot. Right then, chaps. You do, you like, keep them off me, and I'll run in. Oh, I'll do more than that, all right. I charge in and use my heavy axe to get the first phase. Meanwhile, gunfire and chaos can be heard outside. It's good to see my cannon fodder is doing its job. I leap out of the room while the heart blows its lord. Then one simple blow the grenade, followed by a cheeky Molotov, burns the thing down and takes out all of the remaining zombies. Oh, look, oh my god! I might be an absolute absolute beast. But remember, the air's still toxic. Oh shit. How the hell that easy all of a sudden, I'll never know. But after a quick bit of looting, we head back to the sleeping heart from earlier. And maybe that was just a fluke. At the end of the day, I fought hearts at three phases. And the first phase was taken out with the axe, then phases two and three with the bloater grenade molotov combination. But I'm sure the comment section will be able to educate me on why that happened. So for the sleeping heart, I rock up with a sexy little handbrake turn. And always remember to park your car safely. You don't want a little cheeky crackhead pulling you out of your car. There's a big ass horde by there, so if you could do me, me a favour and keep them off my back, that would be fantastic, alright? I know you're not going to be smart enough to actually fight the play card, but that's okay. That's what I'm here for. I do the same four or five heavy hits with my massive axe, then dodge his nasty little substance. One blow to gas, followed by a molotov, which creates a humongous explosion, and the resulting fireball takes out the play card. How have I not realised this this easy? In fact, my biggest struggle is just managing in all of my sexy loot. Whose bloody idea was it to take the pissing impaler? That and maybe my mates aren't as overpowered as I first thought. Oh my god, Isby. There you go. You're lucky you got a friend like me. Now we got a 1500 meter drive to take out the Lonely Heart on the other side of the map. What an adventure. Just me and my two BFFs. Isby and... Chavez! Yes, yes, obviously Chavez. I shouldn't forget him. I mean, at the end of the day, the dude was an absolute beast. And also, I feel I should apologise at this point. I don't know what's going on with my webcam, but it's more jittery than Michael J. Fox after a Red Bull. Moving swiftly on, this play cart is behind Jurassic Junction, which coincidentally enough is actually the former home of both Isby and Chavez. But unfortunately, this heart was right next to a level 3 infestation. Uh, chaps, could you just do a favour and take out that nasty sounder thing? Oh, not that guy though, because, you know, 
I took care of him. So I let them stretch their muscles by dealing with that juggernaut. Meanwhile, I do what I do best. Beating inanimate objects like I'm a 14 year old who can't deal with his parents' divorce. I then step back, preparing my gas bomb, and it seems Isby has come to join the party. Well, this time we might go with a pipe bomb. And that creates one of the biggest explosions I've ever seen in this game. Absolute beast. Oh, look, a shotgun. Not just any shotgun. That's a Kodiak XL. But that's not even the best gun I'm about to get. Oh, he dropped a machine gun. Not just any machine gun. That's an M4. 4X2 Light SSW. The SSW stands for Super Safe for Women. And we're a super progressive channel, so I make sure to equip that bad boy. After that, I decided it would be best to head back to base, because I've got an insane amount of loot and literally no room to store any of it. So I unload my rucksacks and arsenal of weapons, and after a quick heal with my medikit, this time I take off with my upgraded van. But that might be a mistake. You see, I really want to check out how good Chavez and his BR. So I'm gonna make them fight a juggernaut. Don't not touch that van, you little shit. Unfortunately, I didn't tell him to not touch Isby. I will, however, take out this pain in the ass. I also take out the other Roman zombies so Isby and Chavez can focus on the juggernaut. But I think it's fair to say Isby's not much of a fighter. Isby, no, I got you, my love. Oh, no, I haven't. But it's a bloody good thing Chavez is here because he forces him to his knees and I take the final blow. Wow, good good job, team. Good job. And after that, we head off to take down the final few play cards. wonder if I'll ever get used to the smell around a play card. As you will need to, but honest to God, right? We're going to clear them all out, but all right? There'll be absolutely nothing left. You know the score by now. We rock up, smack it till it spews, hit it with a gas grenade that definitely doesn't do damage to me, then throw a second device to ignite the cloud. On this occasion, I used firecracker as their cheapest chips, but be warned they are also loud as fuck. Oh shit, now I'm on fire. There we go, the comment section's happy. There is a downside to using the firecrackers. Um, ferals will munch on your friends. But we've already discovered these guys are absolute beasts, so they probably don't even need my help. I then repeat that same tactic over and over again, even filling my van with a sick amount of loot in the process. What do you think about those screws, huh? Pretty cool, right? But we can't end this video yet. We can't end until we complete the very path we set out to accomplish. It's time to loot these Cleo drops. But at each one, we gotta fight a ton of zombies. God damn it, why can't the game just reward me for doing fuck all? Each of the supply drops is seriously stacked. And that's the second Kodiak XL I found in this video. The second drop is on the roof of this pub. And God knows how, but this feral's managed to find his way up. But I have a wily smoke grenade from the previous drop. Fire in the hole. But the bastard just walks it off. Now I'm terrified. Nah, just kidding. I beat him with my axe. I'll be honest, I was less impressed with these supplies. But if I'm being honest with myself, I need every single bloody bullet. The third drop was more my style. Machine gun and napalm grenade. That's the dream combination. Anyway, with that done, Isby and Chavez abandoned me. But it's okay, it's not bringing back any childhood trauma. I'm fine. Stop asking me about it. Anyway, let's sum up this incredibly easy and simple method for clearing the map. All you need is an incredibly rare biochem station and a ton of fuel to craft bloater grenades. You also need to be on this very specific map doing that very specific mission so you can have two homies watching your back while you clear out the heart. While not necessary, it will also help to have a massively upgraded cargo van so you can store all of your loot. You are incredibly welcome. Next up, Terence has to talk to the group about his success in clearing the blood plague. The only regret is there's no plague zombies left to kill. Well, that's a little psycho, Waldrum. I'm not gonna lie to you, mate. That is a little bit psychotic. Moving on from that foreshadowing, I load up, and then head out. My first plan is to raid all the resources from the local communities. And as a Brit, this comes very natural to me. I'm also on the lookout for someone with the chemistry skill. That way, I'll be able to make as many Red Bulls as I can carry. Unfortunately, there's no secret Heisenbergs in this community, but their leader, Patricia, has an empty fifth slot. And ignoring the fact her name sounds like she abuses waiters on the weekend, she will have to do. So to keep her sweet, I decide to find her and her mate, some fuel. But I'm also known as being a bit of a menace. Well, I gotta make sure that they're staying, like, limbered up while I'm gone, you know? On the way, I take out an annoying feral. Ah, look at him. Oopsie. One for the lols and two for the incredible amount of influence I gain. Luckily, there's a warehouse in the middle of nowhere that might have a fuel resource. I'm sure that aggressive driving style won't come back to bite me in the arse. I manage to find a rucksack full to the brim with petrol, as well as a collection of other goodies. But as I'm leaving, Red Talon jump on the radio requesting my assistance. And seeing as they're right next door and... Eddie's Red Talon. Of course I'll go and have a look. Talk to do the Red Talon agent. That's gonna get confusing, innit? Basically, two of his mates have got into 
little bit of a pickle, and he needs a man with a certain set of skills dressed in a lizard hoodie. Well, to be honest, the lizard hoodie is optional, but he might as well dress good while you're kicking ass. All right, you're getting in the back, is it? All right, okay, yeah, fine, no problem. Didn't know I was a chauffeur, that's all. You know what I mean? Just call me Uber Driver Terry. But everyone knows Uber Driver Terry has the sickest drifts. I rush to their aid, and you'll be surprised to know I'm not packed with a ton of Molotovs. And that just means this entire excursion was actually executed with incredible precision. But it seems these Red Talon guys certainly aren't the cream of the crop, as there was like three zombies and one of their mates tragically died. And while they're grieving their loss, I sell them my redundant shit and pinch their three ammo rucksacks. He then gives me a fishing textbook, which I'll be honest feels a little pointless, considering all the lakes around here are like ankle deep at best. A screamer then goes mental in the distance, so I pull off the greatest snipe of my career. Oh wow, look at that for a shot, come on chat. But whenever I pull off something sick, it's not too long before I get humbled. Oh shit, shit, I'm stuck in a- Ah, you prick. I got stuck in an animation. That is the lowest of the low. Shouldn't attack a man while he's down. I then make my way back to the noisy neighbours with a rucksack of petrol. And I absolutely love this drive. Look how pretty that mountain is. When I arrive, I show off how good of a neighbour I am by shooting the former residents in the face. I then give Patricia her fuel, then raid this supply locker, before recruiting Patricia to the cult. Although I probably should have tested her ability out in the field before making the commitment of lifelong cult member. Oh my god, look. She can't even hit a guy point blank. I then offer to give her a lift back to HQ, but it seems she's got other ideas. Well, fair play, that's a woman who's working on herself, you know? At the end of the day, she knows her cardio ain't great, and she wants to join the greatest cult on Earth. She wants to work on herself, I appreciate that. Cardio is important than surviving zombie land, we all know that. I get to base, then take over as the newbie Patricia, and I'm just now discovering she's a recovering alcoholic. Good for you, the variety is the most important thing. Apparently. I then use my ammo outpost to teach her the chemistry skill. Here we go. And now we have a chemist. That's important for energy drinks. Speaking of energy drinks, I then use my backyard barbecue pit to craft a metric fuckton. How you make a Red Bull on a grill, I have no idea, but at times like this, I figure it's best to not ask questions. Now back to Terry, and it's time to get looped in. So I fix up my upgraded van, and we hit the road. And I want to load up with literally as much shit as humanly possible. I'm talking medical supplies so I can make a bulk load of play cure. I'm talking fuel supplies so I can make a ton of bloater grenades. You're talking literally anything valuable that I can sell to gullible enclaves. Ooh, a set of motorised targets. I also pick up an ammo resource and an assortment of different bullets from whatever the bloody hell that's supposed to be. Look at that, I am just a beast. I also collect the goodies from this auto repair shop that was once claimed by a player card. I don't exactly know how this big gooey zombified mess manages to get its hands on so many guns, but at the end of the day, this is America, they would sell an AK to a four-year-old. I also collect fuel for the van, another rucksack of unleaded, but most importantly, a toolkit. Anyway, with my pockets full of mainly combustible materials, I double forward roll to flex on the unathletic, then make my way back to base to drop off all of my goodies. But while I'm on my way past some more red talon knobheads radio me and tell me they got some shit to trade. I don't know what it is, but today these knobheads just seem obsessed with me. I make sure to sell them everything from the nearby area, then use my overwhelming amount of influence to steal all of their resources. We do eventually get back home after a very successful day of pillaging. However, we do have a feral in pursuit. Well, I'm gonna fight him with my bare hands. I think we can all agree that this is the most alpha male thing possible. Beating a crackhead with a terminal illness with a piece of wood. And given my impressive athletic abilities, it's only a matter of time before I cave in his skull. That's who you're dealing with, chat. But the important thing to remember is whenever I get cocky, I'm about to make a mistake. You see, using firebombs on armoured zombies is a bit like going down on a prostitute. It achieves nothing for myself and is a complete waste of resources. Luckily, I'll never forget the advice of Patches O'Houlihan, as I dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge my way to an epic victory. Also, single-button executions come in clutch. After that, I drop off all of my supplies and get warned I'm running out of ammo storage. But don't worry, I've planned for this exact exact eventuality. I use my modified Red Talon workshop to make an assortment of 556 rounds, as well as the 762 which powers most of my machine gun. At this point, Ray Santos jumps on the radio and he's requesting my help, and I kind of feel bad for him as he's dying of cancer, and the last time I seen him, I left him alone in a damp and deary doctor's surgery. Unsurprisingly, this rotting medical centre isn't making a great home, and now he's requesting my assistance to move base, and in one video I've transitioned from Uber 
driver to a moving man. He wants to move base to a church that his family used to go to. Which sounds lovely in theory, but I'm skeptical. He reckons there's been a Santos in that church every Sunday since his grandfather moved to this town. But seeing as the apocalypse has been around for about a year and a half or so, I'm calling bullshit on that one. Chat 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 chat. We get to the church, and of all the bloody churches in Trumbull he could have chosen, he wants to make base in the one which has an absolute fuck ton of zombies. And guess which silly bastard forgot all of their explosives? Yeah, I got no flammables, right? But once again, without the flammables, I'm incredibly precise. At the end of the day, there's a reason they call me the zombie slaying John Wick. With that massive horde extinguished, I'm once again able to use my massive load of influence to take advantage of this cancer patient and steal all of his supplies. Maybe I am the bad guy. I head back with my spoils of war and I've got a visit from Dr. Hoffman and his bee. They want to install Cleo at my base and even though Update 33 might have nerfed the Haven device, I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. I need a large slot to install it so clear out the auto shop. Isby then warns me it's gonna get loud as fuck so I should probably arm up before hordes of zombies take over our base. No more waiting. Let's just slay the zombies. As predicted, zombies storm our base, but this cult ain't going anywhere without a fight. I even used this time to perfect my forward roll into a headshot. Heavy is a beast. Da -da -da -da. But of course, I do have to save my teammates several times. This is groundbreaking science here. But if I'm being honest with you, I did have one small issue with a napalm grenade. You see, I was expecting it to burst into flames the moment it hit the fence. Oh, oh I fucked up. Not roll under the fence and set my bloody cars on fire. Well, it's a good thing I got plenty of those. Repair kit. The installation completes and then all of the zombie heads start exploding. I can definitely see why they nerfed this, but even so I reckon I can use it to have a lot of fun. But my next mission is definitely the hardest yet. Listening to my allies' final remarks. As a man that's incredibly difficult, so instead of testing myself and growing as a person, I just walk away with my 500 influence. I then decide to swap to Waldron, he's the bloke who misses killing plague zombies. Well don't you worry your pretty little head Waldron, I'm gonna have you fight plenty of bloody zombies. In fact, I'm gonna have you take out a juggernaut to try and max out that fighting skill. I've also equipped him with a double bit axe to try and complete this final bounty. But my first mistake was not giving him any Adderall so he could run around like an ADHD kid. So I not so tactically retreat back to base and the feral hunting me down kills himself on my boot. Remind me to install spikes on my car in real life in order to keep crackheads away from me. Thankfully, the damage was nothing that couldn't be undone with a medikit. And this time I head out with enough caffeine to comatose a rhinoceros. The first whore charges me down, and I charge up my power swing. He hits the deck, but there's too many of them, and I'm not able to get the finishing blow. I get bit and have to fight off a grappler. That's when everyone's favourite crackhead rocks up to make this shindig a proper party. I manage to dodge a number of blows in order to kill the ones on the floor, and that's when shit really gets serious. The infected fatty stampedes into my arena, and I decide to just shoot the feral to stop dicking about. Using my enhanced stamina, I manage to outrun the jug, but unfortunately, once again, the horde decides to grapple. Oh shit. Oh no. No, 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 Waldrum! Can I get an RIP Waldrum in the comment section? Now it's time for Terry to prove his worth as a trader. Oh, avoid them please, thank you very much. I'm not messing with that, you know. After narrowly avoiding those bloaters, Terry heads out into the darkness to start his first trade deal. He's got to chat the Carter of the three riders to see what they need. But I'm never particularly careful with my choice of entrance. Hello friends, I'm here to broker a deal. I tidy up the neighbourhood, then kick in the door. Hello, how's it going? Yes, I know I'm quite loud, but that's alright. Carter, Carter, Carter. We've got a ton of tobacco. But we're light on hygienic goods. Think you could find someone to hook us up? But before I have a chance to respond, the window shatters. Oh, for crying out loud. But me and my apocalypse back get shit done. But when I tried to restart the trade talks, it seems Carter is playing hard to get. Will you stop running about? I'm trying to trade with you. Now, which one is it? Right, you. Not you. Sandman. What a shit name. You should be bloody ashamed of yourself. Imagine naming yourself after a Spider-Man villain. Not sure about hygienics, but I've got a buyer in mind for your tobacco. But it seems a trader's work is never done. Now, I've got to talk to Trell, who's a book collector. And lucky for me, Trell is a local lass, because we got to think of the ecological impacts of these trade deals. That and I've put all of my fuel into Molotovs. And remember when you're meeting new people, it's always important to establish yourself as the alpha. So I try hitting her with my car. Hello. 
Oh, do you see that? She tried to aim a gun at me. She must be a baddie. Actually, it turns out she was actually trying to be kind of nice. And she was trying to take out a zombie that was on my rectum. Swear to God, love, shoot my car one more time, right? And you're going to see a nasty side of me. It also seems that she knows a thing or two about establishing herself as the alpha. Bitch! To be fair, she's actually pretty sound-like. She just wants a strawberry flavour jewel to enjoy her high-quality entertainment. What kind of high-quality entertainment requires tobacco? Probably the kind of entertainment that's only found on a certain type of street. Or, say, maybe a district with plenty of red lights on it. She then gifts me a strange pink figurine, but calling it strange is putting it very lightly. Resembles a nightmarish combination of a pig and a dolphin. Whoever created this was clearly disturbed. So I walk away with the serial killer paraphernalia and make my way over to the surviving soldiers, who clearly didn't get the memo about protecting the environment, seen as they're pissing miles away. Anyway, I do eventually get there, and it might just be me, but it seems like a bit of awkward tension is in the air. I know we haven't spoke for a while, probably since your mate died, if I remember correctly. It just flat out abandons me. What a bitch. But any chance you got some shit to sell? We've got a surplus of hygienic items, but we're bored out of our minds. Do you know anyone with some good entertainment? We have ourselves a trade triangle, and I got a buyer and a supplier for you. He gives me a tube of toothpaste and 200 influence for my troubles, which is actually pretty insulting when you think about it. It's the apocalypse, for fuck's sake. I apologise if my teeth aren't up to your extremely high standard. Jesus Christ. Well, gotta love a road trip right back to where I just was. So basically, Mickey will Wilkerson jumped on the radio, and he has some high valuable stashes for me to check out. And while I'm waiting for the next trade mission to spawn, I figure it's a worthwhile distraction. Off out into the country, you see. Gonna go find a, a hidden stash. Question is, how the bloody hell do I get it? Unfortunately, there's not a rock climbing mechanic in this game, and my spiky muscle car isn't exactly designed for the off-road. I'm gonna end up using all my fuel now. Genuinely, I just feel like I'm riding in circles around a mountain. It actually takes me so long to find this bloody stash. The next trader mission spawns, and it seems the surviving soldiers are having issues with one of our trade partners. Can we talk in private? No, not right now. I'm in the middle of doing Wilkinson's treasure. Honest to God. I need some stuff to be able to sell to you, don't I? That's what being a trader's all about. Commodities that you can sell to gullible idiots. Thankfully, I do find the stash. Aha! Look at this! Ooh, we got a family photo. Couldn't give a shit. Why would I give a shit about a Polaroid when there's explosives to be taken? But unfortunately, the next stash disappears off my radar. Wait, why does it not tell me where the next one was? Oh, honest to God, I thought I was going to get some good shit, like... Nope, unfortunately, I'm not allowed any more free explosives. Instead, I've got to go speak to Mickey at the pub to discuss this old Polaroid. So I rock up to the pub, clear out the neighbourhood, but then disaster strikes. The thing's going to fall apart. Oh, great. Really? That's like my favourite gun. And that's not the only bad news. He wanted to meet me in the pub and then he's locked the bloody door. Luckily, I'm an adult and handle the situation appropriately. For that, Mickey, I'm taking out the window. That's exactly what you deal with. I show him the photo and he's like, oh yeah, that's actually my brother and his fella, who's actually the brother of Lily Ritter, that network woman. Lily refuses to speak to Mickey anymore, but he has a plan to change her mind. Honestly, this whole thing just reminds me of an episode of Jedi Me, Kyle. But before we go, I refuel at a nearby outpost. Honest God, so much travelling today, it's unreal. Somebody think of the environment. Greta is absolutely absolutely seething right now. But most importantly, I also repaired my AK. So basically, Lily's got some unspecified disease, and Mickey knows exactly where to get some very specific drugs in order to treat it. Nothing says I'm a worthwhile friend, like withholding life-saving medicine. I can hear you, you know, silently judging me. You know? Yeah, so you should, mate. That's disgusting behavior. Anyway, I rock up, kill a zombie or three and find this super drug hidden in a trashed shed. We then travel to a nearby town to meet this network runner. We give her the meds, then Mickey gives me a Prepper's AK-47. Ooh, damn, son. He's just giving me the same gun I've already got. That seems like a success to me. Mickey decides to walk home, and I decide to try and find a toolkit for my car. However, the state of decay gods have a different plan for me, as my windows shatter from a nearby screamer, and I get chased by a triple pack of ferals. Thankfully, I'm quick as fuck. Okay, actually, maybe not that quick. But I manage to shake him off, and with a couple of roly polies, thanks to my insane stamina, Gunslinger comes in clutch once more. And obviously, gunfire will draw crowds, but there's nothing Terry hasn't dealt with a million times times before. Come on, nobody fucks with Terry. Terry is the greatest Red Talon character of all time, and everybody knows it. And if you ever get overwhelmed, don't forget to drop an incendiary. And the comment section will be insanely proud of me, because I didn't even singe an eyebrow. Terrence, don't get on fire. I actually find a toolkit in the first container I search in. It certainly seems the gods have blessed Terry today. However, it seems the stranded soldiers got tired of waiting, and are no longer on the map. So Terry heads home to take a well-deserved rest. As you can see, the bloke is bloody shattered like. So we take over as bones, because the comic book collector he dealt with previously needs his help. 
help. She's surrounded by the undead and it seems unlikely she's gonna make it out alive. So I head off with the utmost of urgency, making sure not to stop for anything. Excuse me a second, let me just take care of these. And I just can't help myself. I just love a fireball. However, on my way, I make a terrifying discovery. It seems the zombies are evolving. I run into three screamers and decide to take them out with the arse of my car. Oh, what the fuck? What the... F what the hell was that? Oh my god, I was just trying to tactically take him out. That screamer's obviously a massive roid head in order to eat me across the map that far. To teach these bastards a lesson, I decide overkill is the only justice. That was incredibly disappointing, I'm sure we'll all agree. Luckily, at this point in my state of decayed career, I'm an experienced professional and can take down three streamers without a single issue. What the hell is going on? Why do bad things happen to good people? I'm just so confused. That probably answers your own question, but I'll be honest with you. Your sins are coming back to bite you in the fucking arse, son. I will never run from a fight. It's not in my blood. Luckily, my mission objective is right where this incident occurred. So I clear out a horde that's playing musical statues and rescue the comic book collector, who I've just realised is actually the woman we talked to earlier. Thanks, now get me home safely and that comic is yours, I swear. Well, I'm bloody glad about that, I'm not gonna lie to you, love, because if you had dragged me all the way across the bloody map with the offer of a super rare comic book as a reward, then decided not to give it to me, I would be absolutely bloody seething. There you go, Trell. Now give me that comic book. Thank you. I didn't expect that. Okay, now let's see that copy of the gentleman cadaver. I don't keep my comics here, of course. You bitch. I think I handled this as maturely as humanly possible. She's quick enough to snipe my molly out of the air. Oh shit, oh shit. But not quick enough to take a second shot. And seeing as there's only one of her, I have no reason to let up on my gunfire. Motherfucker. That's what you get for dealing with me. Don't mess with a cult. Occupational hazard at this point, isn't it? She actually had an half decent amount of supplies. So hey, maybe this murderous rampage was worth it in the end. We then head back to base to swap back to Terry, who's now napped and fully recovered, which is fully necessary as we have the trader legacy to complete. Apparently Josh from the Scouts, no, I've never heard of them either, has some concerns about one of our trade partners. It's fair to say I'm absolutely shocked when I find out what Josh has to tell me. I heard our friends, the Denizens, are planning to ambush the trade summit and take everything. I obviously choose the option that'll lead to violence, then head over to the Denizens to pay them a little visit. And they're actually set up in a really quaint residential area. Well, I say that, it's quaint for the apocalypse. You've just got to ignore all of the abandoned cars. I park with extreme precision, allowing me to use the car as cover. Get down, get down, get down, get down, because my plan is a diabolical one. Rooftop sniper. A couple of shots get fired, but it seems the sniper's not willing to get his hands dirty. Are they only after zombies? I even try using the Cleo fire support. And while they're firing a lot more often, they still refuse to target the living. So I move in, keeping my head as low as possible. You all know how lethal hostiles can be on Nightmare Zone. I manage to pop a headshot through a window, and as he drops down in agony, I follow it up with a couple of Molotovs. I get 12 influence for taking a human life. That's like using Instagram during the purge. The second drops to his knees and tries to close the door to shelter from the gunfire. But my mollies are sneaky bastards and manage to sneak their way through. I open the door and execute the second in the back of the head. And with only one left, I decide to give her a a chance to surrender. Surrender, and I will let you live. That was definitely self-defense. She came charging at me and definitely reaching for a weapon. I said, surrender, and I shall let you live. But she refuses my mercy, so I ignite her with burning petrol. But that barely slows her down, and she still comes at me with a shank. So two more shots to the face finishes the fight. And I didn't even lose a smidge of damage. What an absolute legend. I loot the dead like I'm William Burke and William here. What can I say? This show has suddenly got very cultured. No, do not look at my ghoul search history. There's a mysterious wandering trader in the area, and I've got plenty of shite from the court is to sell him. One of his potential locations is in this little shed, but I find something much, much worse. Oh shit, no, but there's a feral! I retreat with haste, and after a roly-poly, burn everything to the fucking ground. <laughs> that gives me a chance to retreat back to the car and make my great escape. I'm just glad I had a chance to put my seatbelt on, because whiplash is no fucking joke. I arrive at the mysterious wandering trader, and after flexing my quick draw abilities, I do what I do best by saving the innocents with burning diesel. But unfortunately, zombies tend to remain standing while on fire, and that can cause a singed eyebrow or two. But eventually, we clear the hordes, and I'm able to initiate the trade. And this guy is absolutely stacked. So I sell him all of the shit I robbed from those corpses, then buy myself the Eternal Guard's Infinite Rage, as well as an advanced suppressor and a firearms training manual. That will allow me 
need to retrain one of my community members so I can unlock gunslinging in another character. But this shopping spree has left me a little light on influence. So firstly, I search the entirety of the house the trader's hiding out in, then sell it all back to him. I then make sure to store my new gun and book in the boot of my car to free up some space so I can fully search the neighborhood. I then repeat this process over and over again. That is until a juggernaut follows me back to base. Well, I say base, what I actually mean is the trader's temporary base. Thankfully, juggernauts are fat and ugly and can't fret through little tiny doors. That allows me to get inside, sell all of my shite so I'm nice and light to initiate this fight. Now, obviously, I could be boring and pop shots from the safety of this house, but you know that's not how we handle shit on this channel. Oh, no. Terence. Unfortunately, I don't have any healables, but thankfully I do have over 60 high calibered rifle rounds. And when switching to full auto, absolutely decimate the big girl. That's it, that's it, that's it. I then piggyback and stab him in the back like I'm trying to clout chase. Terence will always prevail. Oh, no, 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 no. But don't worry, it's no drama. I'm able to beat them off. That is until another triple pack of feral shoes the commotion. Oh, shit. It's, that's more than one feral, mate. That's more than one feral. Luckily, I've got gunslinger and these guys haven't got armored heads, so it won't be an issue. Oh, shit. No, 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 not Terry! I button bash like my life depends on it. Terence must survive. Come on, Terry. Come on, Terry. Come on, Terry. No! Not Terry! But the three ferals had him pinned and he wasn't able to get back up. What the fuck? Can I get the biggest and loudest R.I.P. Terry in the comment section? He's been with us for well over six months now and proven his athleticism time and time again. He's had the plague more times than a medieval peasant. He's taken out more innocent hostiles than the US government. And he saved Trumbull Valley from the blood plague. He was the greatest red talon soldier a boy could ask for. But perhaps he wasn't as popular with the community as I realised. Oh, and home status happens to be cheap. For. Bunch of fucking two-faced bastards. Well, I'm glad everybody recovered very easily after Terry's death, because personally, I'm still devastated, all right? Our next leader must collect Terry's belongings and vehicle on foot and in the dark in order to prove himself worthy to these degenerates. However, walking across farmland without any action isn't exactly entertaining content. The vast amount of the journey was uninterrupted. I suppose that's what happens when your previous leader was such a badass and cleared all of the blood plague. But that doesn't stop us from going on an emotional journey. Oh, is this our old base? Talk about a flashback. Ah, the base we started this journey on. It's only fitting in the final episode that we walk past and admire its beauty. And that's not the only emotional moment. Will we visit the site where our former leader, Laurel, succumbed to blood play? Oh, no, 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 no! Oh, right. Okay, Lorenz got some serious knee joints. Pop a Zanny or two? I was about to say, that is where what's her face died. You know that woman, I forget her name, but she was our previous leader. It goes to show that this cult is very fickle. I clear the rest of the zombs from the riverbed and walk past the two vehicles I wrecked in this canyon. I get deep into town, pop a couple of roly polies, but it's clear that our new guy isn't as fit as Terry was. He's gonna have to seriously work hard in order to prove his worth, especially as he doesn't even have gunslinger. But he's still one of the founded members of this cult and exactly how to deal with this kind of situation. Don't think so, mate. Do not think so. And then tragedy strikes a mere 80 meters away from Terry's crumpled corpse. The belongings of Terry would have been lost, but were instead deposited to your locker. You mean I've come all this way for nothing? Honest to God. I feel like I've just wasted everybody's time. Well, in general, you do that every time you upload, mate. But this journey certainly wasn't for nothing. Well, you might as well take Terry's eternal guard. But that wasn't the only gift that Terrence left his replacement from beyond the grave. That allows me to change his shooting speciality to guns. In. He truly will replace Terry in every single way. But who is our new leader? Please welcome Loren as your new leader. And Loren is very keen on proving his worth. And for his first decree as new leader, he decides to pull off what Terry never could, eliminating the final stranded soldier. Even if it's a cheap shot while his back's turned. Yeah, bitch. Although the Molotov was probably unnecessary. Especially as he's a builder, you'd think he'd be keen on saving resources. Step to me. No, exactly, mate. He did what Terry couldn't. With that out of the way, we now need to head back to base as Loren has a visitor. I meet with Kravitz and he reckons his community has pioneered a design to help weaponize bloater gas. But he's without a doubt chatting shit because that's how I took out the majority of the play cards on this map. He promises to give me some if I can take out some bloaters and seeing as I'm not going to be able to sue him for copyright infringement, I agree. But before I go, I decide to start the builder legacy. But seeing as my base is already perfect in every single way, I rip down the red talon 
watched Howard and build it again. I'm supposed to take out three bloaters, and thankfully there's two just meters away from my gate. There you go, that's two done. I then decide to put my new mate to the test by fighting a plague jug, but he's definitely more infatuated with me. And for some reason, instead of diving left or right, I dive straight into his fucking path. But that's alright, because me and Kravitz make hell of a team. We fight hard, shoot harder, and don't even get hit. I got annihilated there. But everyone knows I'm now eSports ready, and it's inevitable that this juggernaut will go the same way as the rest. Absolutely piss. I'm able to take out the third and final bloater from distance, and Kravitz gives me my bloater grenades. Then that copyright infringing bastard runs off into the night, never to be seen again. Have a good one. And while we wait for the next Builder Legacy mission to spawn, I get a radio message from the legend that is Ray Santos. A friend of his needs help finding a car part, and seeing as he's dying from cancer, he's probably not in the best shape to do it. So I meet with his mate Alexis Carter, and agree to give her a lift to the junkyard. Unfortunately, by driving there, we've also attracted a wandering horde. But before we deal with them, I want to take out that bloater in spectacular fashion. Boom, that's the best way of dealing with them. I boot in the door of this warehouse, and shoot everything that moves. Then batter everything that's remaining. And I love this animation, where you use a sledgehammer as a golf club. Although you might be asked to leave if you try it at the local mini golf. Oh shit! While the horde and Ray's friend burn outside, I frantically speed search the entire warehouse. I'm just gonna close that, okay? While you're dealing with all that shit, you know? But unfortunately, I don't find the part we're after. So while I spray and pay to try and save Alexis, Ray radios in to tell us to search the dead cars outside. Right, now I gotta search cars? You know there's lots of zombies around, don't you, Ray? Alexis finds the part she needs in this scrap pile, but she reckons she's gonna create a lot of noise in order to get it out. Jesus Christ, love, talk about a loud bloody worker. The noise inevitably attracts the undead, but I have 130 high-powered rifle rounds to defend us with. She collects the part, but it's fair to say she's rather impatient. What are you waiting for? Um, you, you dickhead. We make our escape, and I drop her off in the middle of some farmer's field. As I'm wishing her goodbye, it's quite clear that she's still in a rush. But I like to take my time to see if she's got anything worth trading. Ooh, never seen that before. Only 300 influence. I feel that I'm tempted to take that off you. I purchased the right say adios and earn 240 influence for my troubles and I'll always vow to use that influence for good. Well probably not. I also chat to Ray for a bit on the radio and it seems like he's accepted the inevitable. He loves Trumbull and its people with all of his heart and before he passes he just wants to see someone else take over his legacy to protect its residents. And that could be me. Now let's finish the builder legacy so we can get out of this goddamn shithole. But before we go Loren decides we need more soldiers for this cult. So he radios Red Talon to see if they have a spare piece of cannon for Fodder. And to be fair, it's probably for the best, seeing as we have gone through two in the last two videos. When I arrive at the rendezvous, it seems I've attracted a few friends. For those of you who are skeptical about my choice of leader, this is why. Oh my god! Loren banished that motherfucker to the pearly gates himself. Where the hell did he go? Holy shit! I suppose that's what you get. Don't mess with Loren. I meet up with our new soldier, and she has the coolest name imaginable. Laser. What a fucking name. Nobody's gonna be willing to fuck with someone called Laser. I'm sure she'll make a fine contribution to this cult. I get her Home safe and sound, and the first thing we want to look at is her innards. No, you dirty bastards, get your mind out of the gutter. We want to see her traits. She has fortifications, which gives her knowledge of construction, craftsmanship, and gains two materials a day. And I'd say that makes up for the fact she occasionally wastes materials. I'm assuming I'm going to have to build a leader project in order to complete this legacy. So I whip down my trade depot and replace it with a sniper tower. It reckons it's going to take 24 minutes to build, but I use the staging area as my secret weapon to speed up that build time. And while we wait for for that to complete, Loren heads off to introduce himself to some new neighbours. However, as already discovered, my spiky muscle car isn't great as off-road. Oh, come on. I feel I get stuck at least once an episode. This is fucking ridiculous. Shout out to whichever developer created the stuck radio command. You've without a doubt saved countless vehicles. Swear to God, imagine if I just did the same thing again. <laughs> I arrive at the Night Watch base, and one of their members, Kale, needs some backup while he searches a house. And honestly, I'm happy for any excuse to get my hands dirty. But before we do that, I create some pipe bombs to complete the next builder mission. Rather, typically, the house that Kale wants to search just so happens to have a juggernaut nearby, which isn't exactly ideal as I didn't even bring any explosives with me. I help him clear the house of the undead. Thank fuck that juggernaut did not count as a member that needed to be removed. Hi, juggernaut. Would you like to barter? We could maybe have a conversation about you leaving. It turns out he's actually just a really inconsiderate neighbour. Noise complaint after noise complaint. Honestly, I get home and he's just banging on the walls telling me to keep it down. Honestly, without a doubt, the worst neighbour but I've ever had. And IRL, I used to live opposite the woman in a wheelchair who was also a prostitute. But in all honesty, she was a lovely lady. Batshit crazy, don't get me wrong, but a lovely lady. Drop it, drop it, drop it like a heart. And we shall drop him. There you go, Kale. See, 
I can keep you safe. Now look, where the hell is he crawling to? Fair play, mine, for getting up those steps. Whoever built that house wasn't very disability friendly, was he? Then I've got to give Kayla lift back to his home. And you'd think after risking my own life in order to keep him alive, he'd be at least a little bit grateful. Not even a little rub and tug on the drive home. To be honest, that's what I probably deserve for trusting a man named after a fucking vegetable. Obviously, this being Nightmare Zone, hostiles are still extremely difficult. But not even Batman's gonna walk off two seven six two rounds to the face. The third and final of the veggie crew doesn't even have a weapon and just tries kicking the air. They'll rest easy tonight. They won't, I suppose. That's the point. Now it's time to head back to base to give Loren a little rest. Because if I'm being honest, I'm surprised the fucker can even stand. So we'll be taking over as our new red talon soldier for five. Laser used to know a guy who could sort you out with some proper prescription drugs. And even though we're not particularly low on medical supplies, the spares can be used for recreational purposes. Weirdly, the drug stash was actually just around the corner from where I picked her up earlier. So I'm just wondering if little Miss Red Talon over here was trying to get a fix off when she got my radio request. Honestly, the idea of a junkie having access to all of my high-powered rifle ammunition and explosives doesn't exactly fill me with joy. She will definitely have to be one we keep an eye on. But worst case scenario, we can just sacrifice her to the mighty Lord Juggernaut. I find the drugs in the back office of this Burger King, which actually really surprises me when I think about it. I mean, have you ever met a fast food manager that wasn't a stuck-up prick? Honestly, if any of them were on drugs, I think we'd know about it. Anyway, Laser completes her mission, and we swap back to Loren because apparently he has a visitor. Strangers have appeared at your home. Talk to Claudia to see what her group wants. Right, I'm gonna arm up. And my god, do I bloody arm up. My first reaction is to approach hostile and angry. Hello, strangers. Oh my god. But my approach softens when I see her outfit. She's in a lizard hoodie? We need a new home. We saw how nice your base was, and we hoped you'd let us join. All of us, of course. Nah, fuck off, love. I'm so upset about this, I can spit. Yeah, well, fucking keep jogging. Or I'll put one in your face. That's not a lizard hoodie. It's got teeth. That's a rabbit hoodie. She leaves without me having to get violent. But unfortunately, that's not the only freeloader to turn up at my base. Was this not bad? Please, you gotta take us in. Your base looks secure. My friend here is real sick. How about... No. What's up with these people and just, you know, just think that I owe them something. Just because I've built the greatest rad town on Superbase in history. Oh, for Christ's sake, can you have a laugh? The third visitor I meet in the open field and he just tries to run straight past me. I've never seen a better base anywhere. I have many skills. If you take me in, I could help e make it even better. Skills will always be useful. Let's have a little look. You have zero skills. Absolutely zero. Hey, get back here, you prick. You're not getting me in my home. Just because you're stuck on some camo doesn't mean you're any good. Now get back here. Get back here. Fuck off. That's a bad fucking call. Get fucked. Keep running, son. But that turns out to be a fatal mistake, as ten minutes later, Dolph returns. I will await him in the field. This is a tense standoff. Why has he come back so soon? Has he brought others with him? Surely he didn't leave his keys here, right? Okay, I'll admit, that's quite an alpha move. He just literally walks right past me. Hello, Dolph. I hear you have something for me. You should have let this in. Now you've got to go. Not a chance. But thanks for making me feel better about that decision. Psycho killers will become hostile. Well, no wonder I refuse to let you in, you psycho. Who the fuck is going to be friends with someone with that kind of name? Kiss your asses goodbye. And that's why you should never threaten me with a good time. What's that, bud? What's that? I'll let you in on a little secret. The key to being the greatest warlord is to always have the bigger gun. I also don't believe in too much overkill. Look, there you go. There's a free cremation for you. But uh, maybe I shouldn't have used a grin launcher to blow out his kneecap. Defend your home against the zombies attracted by psycho killers. How one hostile with a little tiny gun could attract all of this chaos, I'll never know. But we have two and a half minutes to defend our base from every single freak on this goddamn map. And obviously to look as good as possible while doing it. Gotta love a roly poly, am I right? But that's until a juggernaut gets through the gates. Oh shit, there's a juggernaut in the base. But I have stacks and stacks of explosives. That fat bastard doesn't stand a chance. It's not overkill, we're sending a goddamn message. If we can build something this strong, we may just have a chance of outlasting the Zeds. Exactly, Loren. Exactly. Loren then climbs that trusty old rock and gives us a speech that Nelson Mandela would be proud of. So far, we've cleared three towns of bug plague, and if we've done it three times, we can do it four times, five times, six times. Although, there is something that doesn't quite sit right with me. We just brutally murdered the people who wanted our home, and before their bodies are even cold, we're like, yeah, you know what? Time to check out a new town. That was emotional.